Meeting to order, six o'clock. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended? No, I think it's, I think it's good. Uh, it's like I said, I think the interlocal, if we don't get to that tonight, we could do that. We'd have to do it on the 27th or make a special meeting to do it. No, from what you had said, we're, going, we're not going to just add help and skelter. It's going to be a really important thing to add an agenda item. I would like to see you guys discuss that as a new practice. Okay. Um, it, it's very difficult when, I mean, there's times when stuff has to come up, Dave, but I think overall it's nice to have it in the packet so that there's information. So when you're making a decision, it's, you know, an educated, thought out decision instead of at the last minute trying to make a choice. And I can, I can say that I think from my recent concerns that maybe if it was in the packet, yeah. if someone's really interested, they could call up that packet and say, okay, this is on the agenda. I'm really concerned about that. I'm gonna to come to the meeting. I, I think that's true. Right. I mean, right. that's, I've seen other right. towns have done it and I think <clears throat> it's good that we, I think it's a good practice. It kind of slows the roll a little bit. There's gonna be times when maybe a grant or something, you know, I miss something maybe, but and it has to be added. But I mean, for bigger items, I think you're right. Even for me, it's hard. I need time to research it. And if I've already done, you know, I just don't have time. So sometimes I can't give you an educated opinion and you can't come up with one either because it's cold. So it's just a thought. So let's get the agenda approved. So unless there's any, anything else? Just no, motion to approve. Second. Okay. Okay, we've got um, <clears throat> Paul Lindley second. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then we'll just briefly open it up for a discussion in regards to what we were just talking about, the just defining our practices of adding agenda items. And I think in the past, like Teresa and Dave was kind of alluding to a little bit, is to, to have it an official item. It's nice to have any of the backup information, whatever that might be. Um, <clears throat> and then anything else, we're more than willing to break bring it up and usually we'll do that like um, any other business which might be hey this is something that's yep yeah Julie you didn't hear who seconded the loan group it's seconded and that me. might be a problem as we go through the meeting okay. okay I'll move the microphone yep Paul Paul moved it and Lindley seconded it okay just just be aware of that okay thank you yep um and then you know and then just like anything else if there's something that comes to mind or something a citizen brings up or you know or even i mean there'll be sometimes it might be a liquor license or something that jumps yeah. on there that we don't want to wait for but um, we can take that up under other business it's not a yeah not a big thing but if there becomes like a larger item like like an example good example would be the um adding something to the warning adding something to the warning or right. something that we think there'll be a lot of interest in you know, but the other question too is, is how much time should we give Therese to, you know, like normally it gets printed on Thursday afternoon, Friday morning. Yeah, I try to get it done. So usually by like, like Wednesday is like yeah. kind of rule of thumb if we have it by Wednesday. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I try to like, I put it on my agenda calendar every week for Thursday. And then like this week I needed to kick it out sooner because I was going to be gone. So. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it gives me a chance to read everything and formulate my own questions. But I think, you know, if it's noon the Wednesday before, then that's handy. So, so yeah. noon the Wednesday before to get on the agenda, both board members and citizens, if they have something yeah. to bring forward. Okay. All right. Otherwise, we'll bring it up under other business at the end of the meeting. And then if it's warranted, we can always make an agenda item for the, the next meeting or the next available meeting. That makes sense. Good deal. All right. Just need a motion to adjourn. We'll all go home tonight. Yeah. That like a pretty good night. Wrap it up. Well, who was on the, uh, on the Zoom call? Oh, the, uh, so, I'm sorry. So, so it's Julie Krause, yeah. um, Leonard, yeah. Jamie Daniel, Jesse Plotsky, okay. David. I don't know who David is. There's. I'm not sure if, um, if David, if you can hear me, if you could just say who your last name. Uh, fair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you. Well, then we know, so she knows for the minutes. Thanks, Paul. All right. 
And then, and then just for anybody that hasn't been at the meetings uh, lately, um, we've been talking about, uh, for a while they were kind of, were, the meetings were getting a little bit bogged down because of uh, either um, time that hadn't been properly agended or, or some of the um, um, public comment period. So to just, so that everybody has an opportunity to speak as well as the board members have an opportunity to not be here until uh, really late. Um, <laughs> we talked about the last meeting um, and I don't think Dave was here, but at the last meeting we talked about keeping public comment items to about like a three minute, maybe five minute uh, per item. If, if the comment uh, needs more time, then that would be like, you know, maybe add it to the next agenda um, type piece to it. Um, now, now most of the time there's little or no comments, but there can always be that one, one item that comes up that inspires a lot of, uh, um, activity and then and then that would be just like what um, what Dave was talking about is maybe that item is large enough to want to inspire a larger conversation so we put that on the agenda um, and then as always the public comment is open to anything that's not on the agenda um, and then as we get going through the agenda itself and it's going to get a, it's going to get more difficult with doing the hybrid model back and forth here with with um, the Zoom portion of it, but every once in a while we will look on to see if, if somebody has their hand raised, and then at probably the most appropriate time we'll call on those individuals. So, um, it you know, so if you if you raise your hand and we're still talking and it's ten minutes later, it's not necessarily that we forgot about you. It's just we're working through the discussion and then we'll we'll get everybody in. So, all right. So first, we are going to open it up to public comment. So if there is anything that somebody has on their mind that's not part of the agenda this evening, now is the time. Jesse raised his hand. Um, Jesse Kowalski. Okay, Jesse. Hey. I have a public comment. <clears throat> um, this is actually um, coming from me, um, the EIC, actually. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that, um, hold on one second, um, that we are going to be hosting um, a series of conversations um, to seek community input, um, to talk about and address some of the issues that the select board raised um, about community safety. Um, so the, we just uh, we voted at our last meeting the um, uh oh sorry the um hold on I have it the date and time of these will be um shoot <laughs> I have these um January twenty fifth sorry I'm getting it right now I had it brought up um. It'll be a hybrid um, Zoom and in-person option, depending on the um, climate going on, but definitely accessible via Zoom. Um, the first topic is gonna be uh, speeding. We wanna get input from the community. Um, we got a, um, we have a, okay. Yep, the uh, January 25th at 6 p.m. and January 30th at 3 p.m. And there'll be two hour meetings. Um, we have an EIC meeting on the 28th. Uh, that's in two weeks from now. If you all would like to join us um, and give input or um, be witness to the further planning of these uh, community meetings. When you say they're going to be a hybrid, Jesse, where's the in person yeah. location going to be? Have we decided that? I don't know that we've, yeah, that's a good question. I don't think we've decided if, it. Maybe. If you want it to be at town hall, um, call Kelly. She's the keeper of the schedule here. And then okay. you can see what you, you know, if there's something, you know, here or not. Um, it could be downstairs in the conference room. If you're going to use like an owl or just laptops, the downstairs in the conference room is good. But if you're expecting more people, then you could try to see if the upstairs is available. But just get a hold of Kelly. Okay. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. 
we may have access to an owl if you need it. He's, did you hear him? He said no. he may have access to an owl if you need it, if you know what one of those is. If not, um, you can also borrow the projector here if you want to do what we're doing. Um, it's a little tricky for um, sometimes the audio, but um, because Orca has been so gracious to take care of that for us, but um, let me know. We can try to help you with whatever you need. You're welcome. It's at the town. Uh, the, the projector is the towns. The mics and the speakers are um, Orcas, but we do have some other speakers here that might work. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The owl belongs to BRI. If you want the owl, it belongs to Bethel University. Is that mic on? It is on. Okay. I can pull it closer to you. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Got it. And, and one thing I just wanted to quick add, I don't want to jump on the topic too much, but <clears throat> just there's been some misinformation in the public in regards to our um, discussion with the constable department, we'll call it, is the discussion that we had at the board meeting wasn't necessarily expanding on our current uh, constable uh, privileges or changing any type of policing measures in the community. The discussion was <clears throat> right now, uh, in the past, we've been very lucky with getting like a part-time constable um, and we've always, um, with the community involvement, has always been like a part-time 20 hour a week type um, position. And two things that have come to our attention recently, one is the amount of paperwork that comes with anything nowadays. So uh, we made the, <clears throat> the example of pulling somebody over for speeding. You know, it's more than just a ticket, then you gotta go to the, the court date. So there's a lot of behind the scenes time. Um, so in order to actually get our 20 hours of service from, from the individual in the community, um, a lot of that's getting taken up with paperwork behind the scenes now. So we were trying to figure out if maybe, and the second part of it is, it's very difficult right now to find somebody qualified that wants this a part-time job. Um, so the conversation that we were having is in order to attract somebody to want to invest time in the community, we may have to go to a, not that we were expanding on it, but we may have to go to like a 40 hour a week type um, costing um, budget wise. So it definitely be something to kick around at the meeting um, for sure. <coughs> Did we have anything else um, out there or anybody here? Seats are full here. You guys are missing it. It's packed house tonight, so yes. it's good. Yeah. Should have charged for a mission. I, I know. Oh, Doug's, Mark, <laughs> Doug's not here. It was a sunny day today. Everybody's still at the beach. You know? yes. <laughs> so right. hearing none, we will move on. Um, so next up is just continuing our budget discussion that we've had the last couple of times. And for anybody that's been a part of it in the past, the budget discussion is usually you know, two months long uh, discussion of throw all your ideas on the wall and let's see what sticks. And then we start, um, you know, moving things around to, um, to get the budget in order. Um, so we are tonight's draft three. Yeah, I'm hoping. Kind of. I'm hoping this is the final draft. <laughs> um, so when I, you can see this was my draft as a 12-7 and I had taken your input from last time. I went through the budget again and this was prior to receiving the um, Human Services Board's information. So I had level funded Human Services appropriations when in fact they're a little bit less. So my, this iteration of the budget says that the revenues are up and again uh, part of the revenues up is the increase to um <clears throat> excuse me to the transfer station we're doing their books i'm not sure they're going to go for that but so this iteration is the total revenues are up 5.45 percent 
Total expenses are up 1.4, which means amount to be raised by taxes is up 0.6%. Um, Therese, the CRTS board approved the budget. So oh, they did? That, that oh. 22000 that you put in there for Bethel is, that's accurate. And I noticed that you also had the 10% alliance fees, which is what we voted for, um, the 10% increase to alliance fees. Uh -huh. And you had like, you were, you were close. Whatever yeah. your number was, was just rounded. Yeah. Um, we, so. We had a change of budget, though. We approved it. No, but she's referring just to the 22. Yeah. Board. So they approved that. that. Okay. Reverse to the work that Bethel does. So, so those are relatively accurate. Oh, for, great. For well, your purposes. So that's good. So, um, well, thank you. I, I, like I said at the time, I didn't know. Um, and I think that I had, and I apologize. I had off. I will. Yeah. I was going to get you a spreadsheet on how the, um, I think I did it but didn't print it out, I'll get it for you next time, how the reappraisal was going to work out because Mo and Judy and I had a conversation about that and I was going to mm -hmm. do a spreadsheet for the reappraisal fund. Um, you did. Oh, I did? Oh, yeah. Gosh, I'm yeah, you sent out the A little sleep vision. deprived. <laughs> so, oh, good. It is in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So right now, I know when we're talking about percentages, there's also cents. So. Right. So the, yes, you do the cents, I do the percentages, yeah, so but I mean, still 0. 0.6 is and, like and less than a penny. Just because the way our budget is structured with the size of our town, it's roughly the same. So if yeah. it's 1% increase, it's about 1 cent. So right. Like right now, it's like, I don't know, less than a penny uh, on the 0. 0.95 cents. So, so less than a penny on the <clears> tax yeah. rate. Now, in other places, you could say it's going up 5 cents, and it might only go up 1 penny. You know, So I just right. want to make sure, sometimes they can get confused on... Yeah. On, on that and I did use the most recent iteration of the grant the list too when I came out with my numbers for you know what it would be for a, how much on a house that sort of thing I had done that um, so I don't know if you just if there's any questions on the revenues if that's the way you want to do it Chris just start with that but thank you Lindley that's helpful so I will um, so you're saying my number is close on the yeah. Solid waste. Okay, so um, I'll double check that and make sure I, I do ten percent. I can tell you what the actual oh, yeah. would be. That, that'd be great. Um, do, do, For the ten percent increase it was twenty six thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars and ninety one cents. Awesome. And you were you were right in there. Yeah, I'm a little bit high. Okay. Hey, yeah. which is like that's <clears> nice. <throat> I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the one thing that now that we're into multiple drafts of the budget, <clears throat> one thing to start thinking of as a board now that we've kind of, you know, the last session seemed like we kind of got our list down to needs and wants pretty good. Um, and now we just got to kind of see is what does the overall budget number that we want to provide look like. So um, in the last five years probably now, we have been, because we, we started off, at least when I got here seven years ago, we started off in a position where um, budget, budgets were structured um, or put together but not always followed. So, um, so, so, you know, so we were constantly coming in over our budgets. Um, so we had talked about rather than going in one year, you know, where we need to be on the budget, you know, we would take that over multiple years. So um, at that time, the board that I was on, and I don't know if Paul, Paul? was on it yet, but we kind of had talked Paul about was, that yeah. point. Yeah. The magic number that we were looking for was like a 3% or 3 cents on the tax rate over a period of like three to five years to kind of get more of a bell curve rather than just sharp increase. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we've, <clears throat> for the most part, as well as start looking futuristically at things down the road, like putting away um, things into, you know, funds for another day, um, planning for another day. So the first couple of years was really just not really putting much money away for futuristic needs, but mostly just to get us where we should have been, so we're not overspending money. Um, and now in the probably the last couple of years, we've kind of gotten to a point where our budget is kind of in line um, with the town's needs. And now we've been starting to do a lot of more futuristic planning. So, you know, I guess the question I would have for the board tonight is, you know, we had been, up until last year, we had been pretty much at that 3%, you know, increase or three cents on in the tax rate every year. 
And last year, I believe we thought it was going to be just under 2%. Does that sound right? Yeah. yeah but 2%, was, oh. but then the grand list went up. Yeah. So it kind of offset it. So we ended up basically having a, a net zero increase to the town. Um, but then we got hit with the retirement. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. put us, like, that put us 30. How does, how does the grand list go up? What, I mean, so growth in the grand list happens when people build new properties, people subdivide, um, upgrades to their, whenever zoning permits are issued, right. yeah, that okay. type of thing. And the reappraisal will help. There's the some land trust. There's some different, bring it up, but different changes. I'm just, I'm just thinking back to the conversations about the valuation. Right. And, which and so, ultimately doesn't have, well, it gets divided differently, but it doesn't change the amount of. Right. It kind of. It, right. it, it, what it will do is it it'll bring our land schedule up for sure, and but people who maybe have not had depreciation looked at at their house if they have an older home that'll kind of level out. So, yeah, some people will see an increase in their taxes, but some people may see a decrease. And you know, you try to help do this catch up and. Then, like Mo and Judy and I talked about, you know, you kind of need to be on a planned rotation for your appraisals. Mm -hmm. We should never have been out as far as we're out. And the tough um, thing with the grand list is it's kind of like the school's budget, is we don't really know the update on the grand list until after the budget has been finalized. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing at school. Yeah. You don't know what the state's going to give you per pupil until after your budget is finalized. So That's you're kind right. of playing behind it. You are, because the grand um, list. Because if the grand list went down, then obviously it'd be yeah. more, right? Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, I, that, okay. The, That's helpful. Yeah, yeah. And the grand list lodges <clears throat> April 1st. So one of the things to think about is obviously is, is Capitol Roads, which working on a more detailed because um, two rivers we had a grant and they did a culvert road inventory um, trying to divide that up I'm gonna work on that spreadsheet pretty soon and Chris Ryan slack myself we're gonna try to evaluate the roads and then do every road so that when someone says you know when are you gonna work on whatever Thayer will have a better idea of how that looks by doing all the roads which is you know we maintain about 65 68 miles of road one of the things to think about too is we have the the 2.8 million dollar water bond went on the users and obviously there's good news in the packet that we got more numbers but one of the things that may affect our budget next year is the 1.7 million obviously we're looking to see what we're going to get for financing we're going to try to take advantage of any money coming through the state for that that's why we've mm -hmm. been pushing to full design um what are we going to do with that is that something that we may end up putting we've talked about briefly you know hinting around putting that on the tax rate at some point and so instead of back on the user so you know that's also something to consider we know we have millions of dollars worth of water projects coming we know we need a town garage that will be a loan payment at some point uh, we've kind of been waiting for things to stabilize a little bit as far as building materials and finding a contractor so maybe next you know year or the next couple of years so um, there's those are some of the things that while we're saving for we know it won't make a loan payment, but it maybe would pay for some arch the architecture or right. some of it to kind of buy us in that situation. <clears throat> Those are the things that I think about coming, you know, towards us. Do yeah. we have Do we have anything in here about, uh, say, an architect for the town garage? Or we put money in for in capital, the, you know, like capital improvements, capital so capital building. Okay. So there's so money there in some, there. Some yep. in there for that. <clears throat> There is money for that. We need a new roof on the town office. I'm still waiting for an estimate from the guy. Um, so there's money in there for that. There was money that we had budgeted in this year's budget to go fix the stone wall out front here, but which of course I couldn't get anyone to do. So, but I did save that, put that in there to put, and then put some money in this year to hopefully that will be enough to deal with it. Um, so that's what that improvement fund is for, one of them. The capital okay. improvement fund is for, we've been using it kind of for buildings. and. So the, the unanticipated expense we've had this year was the pension yep. retirement fund. Yes, and, and that was in the neighborhood of forty. Well, it was third. Yeah, about thirty grand, and that was between everybody. Now I know that water sewer is going to make theirs up. I know that um, the road crew, because I had some over budget for insurance that didn't get expended, I'm going to make up their portion. But the municipal office, I have no way to make up that portion. So I'm, 
I'm trying to keep an eye on the overall budget to see where we're going to be. That would come out of any undesignated fund balance or. But we have some room in there year. with. We do some of the projects that we approved that aren't yeah. going to happen this year. Yeah, so, so we've, we've tried to so not really try. So that, but that thirty thirty thousand yep. dollars is one and a half percent of the total, probably two million. Yeah, I mean. It, yeah. So and and I know that um, Kirk White emailed me and said that he was in a meeting when I think with Beth Pierce and Beth was going to send him an email that they'd finally set the numbers for visas. I haven't seen that email yet as I just got back to town today. Mm -hmm. But um, so that will be, you know, I budgeted high because I have a feeling what's going to happen is last time we went from 13.84 to 19.5%. I don't think the towns will go up, you know, as much, but I, I think this time the employees will also because the employees didn't rise at all last time. So I expect that will increase a little bit this time. but. I'm still high because I don't know yet. If you know that number, like let's just say you get that percentage increase prior to this being finalized. Yeah, yeah, we will. Would we want to shift around? I'm just sort of piggybacking on your comment of like we're looking at what we might shift around at this moment. And I guess kind of not, we don't know what that number might be that we would shift around, but that would give us something that we could at that point shift around. Yeah, and my recommendation would be to do so, obviously, to put some into, you know, I mean, I'm always big putting it into capital funding, just because we know we need a new town garage, we know we need a roof on the, we, and we know we're behind in road maintenance, and we know that, as Chris Jarvis and I talked about before, there's money coming into the state, and I'm hoping hoping, hoping that the state uses existing formats for doing like more paving grants, more structures grants, and not, you know, something that we're all familiar with doing, not like the VORET grant was tough because even the people on the state end were trying yeah. to figure it out as they went. And so um, I think that more matching funds would be really nice to have because we, we could and maybe we could really get capital some. funds towards Match. Yeah, so, but I'm yeah. saying is if there's yeah. a big savings in retirement and the budget is still this good, maybe we don't cut it. We put that money into more capital funding so we have or, more leverage money. Well, if we put it into capital, then we can spend it future years if we don't spend it this year. Yes, right. yeah. yeah, because but, anything, you're right, because anything in this yeah. budget, if we haven't spent it, goes away. <clears throat> I say but that, it goes away. But if we put it into capital, is is it really available as a contingency? Yes, it's not as a, not to offset any deficit. No, but no, it's I don't mean to offset. I mean an unanticipated, like grant match. Well, it could be a grant match, yeah. but it could be a change in uh, in retirement or health insurance. Uh, no, that no, we we'd have to take that through the yeah, general budget. Yeah, we'd have budget. to take that through the general budget. Capital funds, you know, the way I look at them, an easy way to think about it is something that we're going to depreciate that has a at least a value of five to $7,000 that's going to last more than a few years. If it's something like, for example, I'll use this, turnout gear for the fire department is very expensive, mm -hmm. but we don't capitalize it even though it's pricey because if they could have one fire and it could be ruined. So we we only going to capitalize stuff that has you know some longevity to it, some longer value. But a grand usually, usually would, equipment, a culvert, road, roads. equipment, culverts, mm -hmm. yeah, no. something like that. Uh, know, the larger infrastructure buildings, but, that yeah, kind of stuff. reappraisal okay. fund, that sort of stuff. Well, then, even though we can't carry it on, would we be wise if we have the capacity? To consider a contingency line that is budgeted and not spent if we don't need it. We're trying to stay within the budget, huh. but if we get something like last year's surprise, right. uh, we would then have something somewhere to take that. Right. Well, it, and, the, and the other thing too is typically, and and we're we're getting there. We're we're getting closer every year, and about two years ago, we didn't even have it. But right. normally, a town has an undesignated balance, right? So even though you're you're in a I'll make it up, you're in a two and a half million dollar budget right now. You you have a Small you know stuff. half a million dollars in your checking account, we'll call it, <clears throat> that you can use for those 
issues, and it's an undesignated because it doesn't have any so right. proper it's purpose. Carry, it's the carryover from the yeah, and it right. also it also right. protects right. you from right. payroll borrowing and stuff like that, or yeah. or if you have to borrow temporarily right. for a, a well, grant project. So, I, so I'm yes, yeah, so yeah. A, a yeah. thing to <laughs> and it's something that we might want to consider. And and we like is, two years ago we didn't have it because right we you know we were. You know, right. in the red until like a couple years ago, yeah. and now we're starting to have a balance. And the idea, and, and Teresa and I were talking about, is you know there there are certain models out there that show like town of your size should have X amount in your checking book. You know, you call it yeah. checkbook. Yeah. You know, in a town of this size, we had said that you know we were at three four hundred thousand dollars is something that you should have a balance of carryover, right? And that allows you to. It's like we say to an individual, you should have six months saved up. Exactly, <laughs> it's just like that. Right. right. And, and what will and happen? It, and those contingencies, if yeah. something happens, and you can pay for that unexpected thirty thousand dollars and things, and yeah. um, because before Bethel would have to borrow the money, you know, yeah. to to then pay it back, you know. And what you'll do is, once we get to that point, I'll be anxious to see this coming audit. Um, once you have that, then we will also create a policy about the undesignated fund balance because you don't want a huge one because no. in some cases what towns will do is if you get a larger undesignated fund balance, they'll add a revenue which is like $10,000 or some percent back to the taxpayers to reduce taxes mm -hmm. because you're to keep your undesignated right. fund balance in control. But yep. since we've never really had one, um, <laughs> it'll be a good problem, problem to deal with very soon. <laughs> A really good one. That's the hope. But we are getting there. And last year, we last year we had a surplus, not a big one, but it would have been larger if the transfer station didn't owe us money, right? Yeah. Right. So, but this year now that well, now they at least they were on they don't track. Didn't owe us money. Yeah. Didn't owe us money last I checked. That could change any time. But you know, so that that's one thing that's not on, or yeah. you know, that we are acquiring on yeah. that. But I think the thing that we have to talk about now is now that we're, you know, I mean, we're, you know, most of the items are pretty much settled, right? I mean, there might be a couple of things that shift or some retirement percentages that change, but now it's kind of us saying, like right now we're looking at it as 1%, right? And we had talked, or at least the board over the last, you know, five, seven years has talked about this 3% bell curve. We're at 1% with our, you know, needs. So how much futuristic money do we want to put into this budget to carry through? So, you know, do we want to just say 1% and just we're just going to not do any other? I mean, we're still budgeting futuristic, but not do anything above and beyond. Or do we feel that, you know, we could put an extra percent in the budget to put in, you know, highway rehab or, or um, capital, capital improvements, improvements or, yeah. you know, there's... You know, a bunch of stuff that we could, you know, put yeah. pay off some extra debt, or you know, there's there's always those different pieces, you know. And I know last year we had talked about like two percent seemed to be kind of like the what we were trying to go for, and then which was good, and then and then unexpectedly, which was good, you know, the yeah. grand list came in higher, so then it went to you know zero. Of course, had we had known that, maybe we could have put a little bit more futuristic money right. aside, but which is challenging. So. And but last year we were also up against, we thought the schools was going to be through the roof too. So we yeah. were trying to kind of balance that a little bit. And I don't even know, does anybody even know what the no, school is looking at? I haven't heard. The other thing too is... I think so. I gotta, I'll, I'll try to attend the next one. But yeah. The other thing too we talk about is, um, like for example, we knew out of the gate, you know, I'm, I'm never happy to come in and be like, okay, I'm already 30,000 in the hole and I haven't started in July yet. But then I go to all the department heads and say, well, here's the expectation. <laughs> so uh, yeah, where make, are you going to save make to cover it up. this? So I mean, we do go through them each month, and, and I think that's something that's relatively new over the last three, four years. With mm. is I do have an expectation that if you're something happened on one end of your budget, then you need to start seriously looking at how you're going to make that up because mm. we can't sustain, you know, that sort of loss, you know, that we'd seen in the past. I mean, when I first came, I went back ten years to try to mm. figure out what was going on you know so yeah. so do we know what the immediate impact is on a hundred thousand dollar house um, um of an increase of one percent or i had done it i had done it put it into a perspective that i think i did it in last was viewing you know, do you have last 
somebody's last month, well, last week's packet or two weeks ago packet I did, unless I updated it. Let me see. One cent on. I did it in the last packet one for cent you. One cent on 100. Um, can you pull it up, Lindley? Yeah. I'm doing She's that. so good. Yeah, because I did a spreadsheet the, for you. Was that the 22nd? Was yeah. that the date? 30. Yes. $30, maybe? That was the 22nd. 25? Let me see. I don't think I did it again. $25 of 100? She's going to, yeah, Lindley had a, when I put it in your packet two weeks ago, I had done a. I just had it open on my screen and then it disappeared. Oh, no. I can't find it. Hold on. Uh -oh. Is it yet? Lindley's the tech savvy. <laughs> All right. I have to go search for mine. You're talking about the, the CLA? What I, yeah, I had done for the, I had given you guys the piece that you would have seen in the town report mm -hmm. that showed you, and I did a little blurb down at the very bottom of the packet saying how much the taxes would increase on a $250,000 yeah, home. Yeah, right, roughly a number. Yeah. Like the, the one time you want me to pull this up, I'm not going to have it. I don't know where it's gone. Right, I can go um, back to the select board meeting. All right, I'm just, I think if I go to the website. And look at it. The other, the other thing we don't know that I brought up before is we are going to see, I don't know when we're going to see action on the state level with climate. Yeah, I don't either. But we will eventually need to be thinking about a match or something on some of that, I am sure. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. <clears throat> and, and I've been I kind would, of reading Two Rivers. They kind of, they do an excellent job kind of keeping you up on, like, I don't know. So I don't, you know, I'm not sure Just, that. Teresa, you <laughs> sent the last packet, not Kelly. 1120. So I the for Kelly. Yeah, oh, and this says 11 I'm looking on the right. select board. So Got it. That, oh, do you? All right, I'm looking on yeah, it. Yeah, I just so it if, if we have the capacity for a half a percent or a percent to just... To be able to take advantage of something. That's okay, Paul. We're getting there. Okay, right here. So as of the last iteration, using the estimated tax rate, municipal taxes for a home valued at 200000 would be 2046 but it's dropped down now because I think I had a grand list value of... Two oh one two seven seven four. So approximately twenty bucks. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you yeah, take. I think the, it's like twenty. Yeah. For a for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So you just. <clears throat> that's not even two dollars a month. Yeah. yeah. I'll just give you the. But no, yeah. Right, right, no, that's, right. that's good. Something yeah, and, to think about. and the thing too is that is like Chris is saying is we're we're budgeting, you know, like eighteen months out, and then the grand list isn't lodged until April. So everything has happened when you launch the grand list. So yeah. if there's an up or down or value, it's you know a lot of sometimes you'll know if somebody like a major home has burned or something like that you'll have an idea of what's going to happen but um so i was doing some doodling on it um <laughs> do you have anything on revenues yeah well everything's revenue actually um oh, okay so i was kind of i guess what i was putting together for numbers right now anyways was you know adding another one percent to the budget <clears throat> which is like twenty one thousand dollars yep and i had what I had thought, and then maybe you might have answered one of the questions, but because we were talking about fixing the wall out here, yeah, and because last time I think we, we put 10. we put five, you said it was going to be more at least ten. We had ten in last time, and I moved it to the capital fund. And I put five in this time. Okay, is that enough? 
Okay. So well, I, I guess I could only get someone to give me an estimate. I, I, I thought about increasing a, a percent, which well, would which would be five more for the wall. I asked Kelly, and then to, sixteen thousand into the highway fund, which is because the highway fund we have Sand Hill, Christian Hill, yeah. Gilead, and then we're talking about well, we were talking about some sidewalks yeah. on River Street, but also um, be, before the next uh, state job comes back through here is doing the sidewalks from the corner of Pleasant Street down to the school, those ones mm -hmm. too. Um, so we just got to start saving for those. Yeah, sidewalks because yeah, we don't budget anything for sidewalks. So the- So that's the Crystal Drive project? That's in part, of, that's in the 1.7 million. That's in the yeah. So in the 1.7 million is Sand Hill, yeah. is Water. Graham, right. Island, and yeah, and full lane pave. I said, everything has to be a full, full pave mm. now. So it's Graham, Highland, Crystal, Sand, Centennial, Bicentennial, Crystal, Graham, Highland, Bicentennial. But I mean the water situation on Crystal. That part. That's part of the $1.7 yeah, million. Dollar. Yep. Yep, oh, the okay. $1.7 million project, so, yes. But we haven't determined if what path to go, if it's a pump station. Or we have there. determined. We're going to the pump station. Pump station. Yeah, yeah, we have determined after speaking to the town attorney about some options. And <clears throat> okay. so that's where we're at now and, and um we're still trying to do, we're talking with a landowner about putting a pump station there and yeah. so we're okay. kind of doing that right now so a couple of the revenues that i had okay and this was just cleaning up some stuff so and i don't know if this ever got moved back but um uh ticket revenue so we had increased the ticket revenue at one point because we were talking about inc potentially yeah. increasing Right, so I, I, I didn't touch the ticket revenue at that time. What I did okay. was I took this 2165 based on the percentage of the year we were at now, yeah. looked at the 4,000 for last year, and that's how I came up with the 5619. Because um, I was thinking at 2165, we were on target to do more, um, but you know, it's, it's hard to know, frankly. Yeah. Um, so based on what I had done there, I had, Cleaned up the revenue a little bit. So um, what'd you put traffic tickets? I, I took it down to 4,000. Okay. Um, and then you answered the question on the solid waste admin because that got yep. approved. Yes. Because that was a question mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that we have to be careful of, and Teresa and I've been talking about it, is so because years ago we were behind on a considerable amount of property taxes over in the town, that on the revenue side of things, mm -hmm we carry uh, revenue in there for things that should have been paid before, right? So penalties and interest and back taxes, which was good years ago because we were collecting those. Right. But now that we've done a good job of collecting a majority of those, we have to start adjusting those revenue numbers down because if we keep those revenues there, all of a sudden we're going to you know, miss it by one or two pennies. Exactly. So That's I had looked I at <clears throat> taking those down even farther, which okay. was like 10,000 on the penalty and 15,000 on the interest, which is okay. whatever, 5,000 there. Yeah, because we do so, have a tax sale schedule. The date just... Okay. So it dropped the revenue page by like $6,600. Okay. Um, on that piece of it and then cost wise i didn't have any i guess the biggest question i have cost wise is and i and i feel good that it's going to happen is some of the i think that those retirement percentages that are in this budget yeah. probably will allow us to put some money somewhere else yes. you know and i had a question you know had you talked to kurt since his meeting he sent me an email so. on I, last time I checked, my email was Wednesday, and he had, was in a meeting. Somebody had the numbers, and he was going to forward to them to me. But I okay. have not checked my email since um, as I just returned today. So I do think there's going to be some money there, and I want to see it go. I think capital improvements between the roads and the capital like buildings, because the roof mm -hmm. um, that's going to open that, that's the roof, the fascia, the soffit that's going to open up a yeah, can of worms. It has to, and I'm waiting for a price from Bob Conniff, and then I have him repairing this roof. I already have somebody prepared to do the inside work over here that needs to be fixed because of the leak. And, um, and the town garage, it's going to be pricey. When we looked at the three architects, they were like, you're, you know, it's going to be a million bucks. And um, I think what we, my thought recently is 
bringing in someone who does metal buildings. Like there's a contractor over in Rutland and just, or I'll go to Rutland. I might just go talk to the guy and just be like, look. I like the one that they built in Chelsea. Just put a new one up yeah, in Randolph there, just outside of Randolph. Yeah. You to contact them oh, good. I can call Trevor. Yeah. Which, where did they do it? Up to where the monument place is on the left, just across from yeah. McGee. Just out of Route 12 going out of... It's where the iron, uh, iron and the tattoo iron. parlor that's is. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So left. that's not the town of Randolph. No, 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 oh, but okay. it's, a, it's a private thing, but it's a huge building. Oh, okay, oh, all right, yeah. I'm sorry. I was like thinking of town handle. Yeah. Might be worth just... Yeah, I'll find, yeah, contact. absolutely. I know where you mean. And um, also too, like I said, I'm just thinking about talking to someone because who does it, you know, who find out what, because I know metal costs, steel costs were up, but the architects were like, you, no, you were, he, or they, the three of them, one, gentleman was a little more reasonable I thought than the others but some of them were like yeah like you and know it, you're they we had we were looking for six hundred thousand a very specific and he was like you're looking for a million bucks and I'm like mm, no I'm not so did anybody have questions about the appropriations the human um, service uh, appropriation I have, I have a little my little question on the budget I didn't see that so, uh, health insurance I see the, the note at the side that says three family and one pay in lieu. Yep. We offer the town of Bethel, I must say we have we been this way. We offer health insurance. We do offer health insurance and if they t don't take it because they're on a plan with their spouse, or um, $3,000 is the payment in lieu of insurance. It's been that way since I came. It's very low. but. Some, town, some people mm -hmm. increase the payment and look to basically buy people, so maybe they'll stay with a spouse's insurance instead of using ours. Um, but what we do, what it currently is and has been for a long time is $3,000. So if you stay on your spouse's, that $3,000 is included in your pay and it helps offset maybe your deductible or any um, premium that you pay. And we do have a couple people that take advantage of that. But it's it's a deal for us. So, all right. Right, and that might be something we <clears throat> might want to take a better look at that in the next. Thing. Is there a way to make that a medical a savings plan? Well, currently the insurance that we have yeah. comes with an HRA. So whether we could add an HSA, I don't know. I don't know because our plan, the current plan that people participate in here comes with a health reimbursement account. I don't know what it would take to add an HSA. We may be too late for this year because our plan year but, is January. Because an HSA yeah. would include the things like you just mentioned. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Co-pays right. and that and, kind of thing. And currently we give it to people in their salary <laughs> assuming that they'll so use it now, for. But in my salary is taxable. It, if it's a benefit, it's, it's a, a health benefit, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's right. It's a benefit, but it also increases your, you know, I think it also, um, I don't know if it adds into your retirement as well, your retirement value. But um, I'd have to look. So, I haven't done payroll. In, we don't do payroll anymore. I have to look because I can't remember. But um, so currently that's just what we give people, is it, and it adds, you know, $115.38 per pay period that we say, here, use this for your medical insurance. If they use it to buy, fuel oil, that's what they use it for. But it's more of a, not every town does a payment in lieu of health insurance. And at $3,000, it's no incentive to keep people off our insurance. I'll tell you that. It's more of a. So it's either do away with it or maybe potentially increase it. Or increase it, it yeah. Well, I'm, and I'm asking because that's 3000 that's an income uh -huh. that the other employees are not getting. But the other employees are getting a much larger value. <laughs> yeah, they're making out. When I big do time. someone who's on health insurance and I do their entire salary, FICA, Medi, retirement, do their whole you know payment of what, and then compare it to that person, you know, there's, I have no guilt over that thing because I don't. I feel like it's trying to make something that's already inequitable equitable. I've had this struggle for 15 years in this job, and, it, and it's a tough thing, but yeah. I think Chris is right. I would hate to see it done away with because you have people <clears> used to it, but I think if you were really using it as a 
carrot to get people off your insurance, which would save you a lot of money, then mm -hmm. you need to increase it. No, yeah, I agree. And probably something we should probably I can look, at, look at at the turn of the year when we revisit our policies is, does this make sense? Should we do more? Should we do less? And I can, I'd have to ask you know, about Dave's favorite HRP question is, let's take a look at the whole house. formula, you know, Therese? Say, oh, hang on, we're in HSA combined with HRA question. And it's not a bad time to look at the whole formula, the whole package, what we're paying yeah. out, you yeah. know, per, the percentages and whatnot. Sure. Mm -hmm. As they change often and Yeah, this year everywhere. it actually did, and the increase in premium was like less than, it was like 0.06% in premium this year. And the people uh, as employees are, you know, certainly our contribution to the um, now the, deductible one. Now the Paul's question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Paul. HR, did anyone have any questions about um, Paul and his committees? No, I didn't. So I know it's wrong in here, Paul. I just level funded yeah, it in here. But um, mm -hmm. did you have any new applicants? No. No, we did not. Uh, we did, though, decide as a group that what we're going to do is, um, in the town report, put a paragraph or two down below this chart. There's usually a very ugly picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to lose the picture. And we're going to put in a couple of paragraphs that describes the process that we go through to have people apply for this, these appropriations. So that if there are any local organizations that aren't taking part in it now, they'll have an idea of how to get involved. Um, sure. That's great. And it's mostly targeted at more, there are several local, you know, Bethel organizations that aren't involved in the, the process yet, and they would be able to see how to, how to do that. Do you have a huge, you know, I think I sent you the sample policy from BLC too. Is that something you guys are going to work on or think about? Or well, I, you know, I, I, did, I did read what you sent and, and we can come up with a policy. I basically just would outline the process that we have right now. Um, Which might be nice in a way and then we could, because I don't know if this has this, I don't know the answer if the select board has ever formally adopted or done anything with the way. I don't know. I just know you guys no, have done that for no, years. So I don't always know. kind of gone on through. Yeah, I didn't and, know. And we need to clean that up a little bit. There are some procedural issues that we need to deal with. We are a town committee. Yeah. So there are certain things that we need to do that we haven't been doing. So we have to kind of clean that up. That's right. And we'll have to remember that closer to March about re reappointments and things. And yes. Yeah, thank you yeah. for that. Because, yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. And when you said bad photo, it just reminds me that tonight we, I need to take a photo of the select board. So don't go running out of here after the meeting adjourns because Kelly asked for a new photo for the right. town report, please. Sounds but good. thank you guys for doing that. That is such yeah. a help that you guys meet and, and look at all that and vet it and do the report. It's very handy. So you did not get a request from the Cub Scouts? Nope. Did you have any defense questions? No? Okay. Not Probably really. because they're not aware Other of the process. Other than, you know, I was going to add 16 to the highway I fund and 5 to the wall. Okay. But if we have enough money for the wall, then... I needed the other thing, it. too, I was thinking of was this. Yeah, I know. Yep. Good and question. I, but, but they never got back to us on how much the pool stuff was No, well, we didn't know. We st are you so kidding? I don't know it's, what the budget there. Because but. we don't know. We're still waiting to hear back from contractors about the pool and how much it's going to yeah. cost. We're still trying to, it's going to take us a little bit longer to finagle <clears throat> people Cindy. together to get that. And as far as the <laughs> wall, I've been trying to get an estimate from Greg, is it Greg Barr, Dave? Is that his name? I, think it's for I have right? talked yeah. to Tristan. Um, I've talked to a couple, and I've been waiting. And one guy, Greg, was the only one who said he would give me an estimate. And I've been waiting. And I asked Kelly while I was gone. I'm like, can you please harass this man legitimately until so I have some concrete number? And didn't somebody number. say that there was either either VTC had a program or one of the area high schools had something where they go out and oh, I don't know. have I've a field? I've never heard that. Well, I was, was that you? Used to have they used to. 
I don't know if they still do. Yeah, that. I had mentioned last year when we were talking about the wall and repointing this building that yeah. Yes Tomorrow does a yes, sort of masonry class on brick and gotcha. repointing. And okay. We can talk with them about being a site for gotcha. them. They okay. didn't end up running theirs this past year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why, but I could reach out to them and just say, hey, if you need a site. That would be wonderful, would, be would you? Be a site and do whatever. You know, it, it usually comes with like, you have to do some light work or you have to do some whatever sure. and they'll tell you yeah you know, that would be it all with them, but, great do you mind um, doing that no and i can ask them they do have a few stone classes i don't know if it's quite this style like the ones that i know of are more dry laid stone not mortared in like this and so i could ask them if a they know of anybody who'd be even willing to come and do a quote or if they would want to do a class yeah because mm. yeah. i have reached out to um, i had two or th two people for sure i had someone one guy take a look at it, and one gentleman who said he would give us a quote and he never showed up, and then I, and so when I was doing the budget, I asked Kelly, I'm like, can hmm. you please just call him every day? Yeah. <laughs> so well, I'll, I'll ask him about both um, repointing and really awful masonry. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I have less certainty on the masonry, I, yeah. I just don't think they yeah. know what they're doing. But just okay. because I didn't know, you know, you're trying to throw a number at something, right. and I don't <clears throat> know, and, and I think right. the guy at first had said I was in the ballpark between last year and this year. So even if we only get a portion of it done, then we budget more for next year. Cause I had even offered to do it over a two year, you know, stint right. or whatever, but until I have an idea mm -hmm. how much it's going to cost, I. Right. And get it done but now. Cause you. the longer we wait, the yeah. more know. damage well, will happen. And we'll be more you know. on the scope of work in that, on the wall. The what? Do you have a document of the scope of work on I don't because I need someone to come and look at it and, and give me some ideas about, I had um, Tristan Klein, I was texting with him, called him, emailed, and he came and I think he was going to take a look at it. He was super busy. And um, because it's an interesting one because it's like mortared in the back so it looks like loose stone, but I don't, I mean, I don't have enough knowledge to put together a scope of work. So that's why I wanted like two or three estimates. And um, mm -hmm. I took photos of it and sent it to people. And um, so, but everybody was so busy that mm -hmm. it wasn't a big deal. So, uh, you know, like they were like, eh, I have bigger jobs, but I'll reach out again to Tristan too. Um, Did you uh, get hold of, what the heck is his name? Enright, out of, he's in Royalton. I think so, that was a name we had, but. Um, I know it was somebody in Royalton, but what, Enright? Yeah, I don't know what it Okay, last name. All right, I will, I know I did last, mm -hmm. or a year or so ago. I talked to Armo over in Rochester. I think so. I think we had a couple. A-R-M-O? Yeah. We had, um, what was the first name? Mike. Thank he's you. In the, he's in the Herald here in the business. Okay, because I know, um, I've used him before. We had, um, I had even, we'd found anybody in the area and sent information and photos and stuff and had, yeah, you know, but uh, people are so busy. Oh, yeah. They're mm -hmm. like, eh. so we'll do it again. And, and um, so we have something better to build from. So do you think we'll have the updated retirement numbers? And yes. We could have a pretty close I think you should be able to finalize. Budget final next time. To I think on the 27th, you should it? be able to finalize the budget. Absolutely. I mean, not like we're far off. No, Anyways, we're not. I mean, just touching up a little bit here and there, but. Yes, I think <clears> so. <throat> I'm hoping that when I check my email tomorrow that. Do the, um, do the listers have any idea of any movement on the grand list or do they have any? No, I mean, I used, the number I used was up a little bit. And, um, <clears throat> but I, I mean, I'm not, I think she's looking at something that's fairly consistent. A little bit that's been off with them is, and not their fault is the, um, current use because the state is behind but mm -hmm. I don't think they're expecting to see a lot of movement okay. I, I know what I always just figure we're not going to see any growth in the grid list. it's just <laughs> easier if you see it it's nice and it <coughs> helps you out but if, yeah. never <coughs> count on it I would Chris I would support your idea of adding a percent okay and kind of presenting a two percent or a two cent budget <coughs> Okay. And we'll put that extra cent yeah. in capital funds. In capital I'm or highway to, fund. I think those are both roads and, and capital. Well, it's not, it's not a lot of money. It's only like 21 grand. I know. But it's better than a sharp stick <laughs> in the eye. A little few, a little few. Well, it's better yeah. than nothing. Well, the highway might be the best way to go because there's, in the next five years with that extra 
1.7 billion that's coming to Vermont, you know, if you have if you have your funds ready and shovel ready projects, you're probably more apt to get projects, you know. Yep. Because they're going to have to spend money. That's true. Um, where capital right now, I don't think we really have got our duck in a row close enough to spend it, right? What? I mean, on roads? Oh, yeah. Well, capital would be no, Newtown Garage or. Oh, right. No. You know, I mean, well, because we. I mean, right the highway. Now, capital, is, the, like the improvement budget, I feel like I have numbers. I mean, I have numbers for the garage, numbers for the town office. Those in there, that's in there and set. But roads are something we need to snuff out for the whole town instead of this piecemeal bit mm -hmm. um but yeah so i think that's good all right i'll make sure i'll do the, that for next time the climate action plan does include conversations about weatherization for towns town buildings yeah yeah and uh and town fleets uh going electric so mm -hmm. yeah. There are, there may be, those will be capital expenditures sure. as well. Yep. yep. And that's something we definitely look at. We insulated the basement of town hall or town office yep. a couple of years ago. That's why we need to do the roof. Once, obviously, once the new garage yep. is built, it would be more energy efficient. Well, so, I mean, those, I mean, those are, I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's I think true. the good thing that we face in Bethel, anyways, is, I mean, obviously, we're a small town. But we don't have that great infrastructure. Like we don't have dozens of municipal buildings. You know, we have just a couple of municipal buildings. Right. Is the library a town property? No. 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 The library. That's why they the, put their money. The library receives. Receives support. Yep. She. They have to receive minimal support. There's a certain right, figure right. in there, I dollar read, resident or I something. Read the letter, so I yeah, I, so that they maintain funding. Yeah, but, but, but the they've got the something in there trust. for insulation too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's but right. But it's not a, it's not technically a municipal right. identity. Yeah. Yeah. Lindley's right. Yeah, it's a trust. So, it's not so a I mean, we're looking at this building, fire and, station, and then you know, we're, yeah, I mean, this building and the fire station has had a lot of renovations of late. So what we may have to do with these two buildings would wouldn't necessarily be well, a, either, deal breakers. Energy audit wouldn't hurt. And then the good things that we have is the other two buildings that we have are ones that we plan on doing something with, you know, so we can build that into it. And then, you know, our fleet on average, what are we, five, five to seven years on a turnaround? Eight. On I think I built, eight. we built the budget on eight years for so a truck. So it kind of gives us well, that comfortable spot the, as the trucks come up, we can and, and, and the truck, swap the them out. And the trucks are iffy right now in terms of electric. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, know, very, but, I don't see that. But I mean, I'd make it up, like if you went biodiesel well, or whatever I, it might be. But, but, but yeah. uh, anyway, yeah. there are also conversations in the plan about retrofitting current fleet as those technological things come available, recognizing that dump trucks could be on the, could be maintained for you. Mm -hmm. Well, Fire like trucks. I said, the, the good thing is that our fleet is on a maintainable cycle that when the information gets sent to our level, you know, we'll have a period of time to deal with it, which should fit into our timeline on cycling through our equipment, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, and they, yeah, and they'll look at that, the technology. You know, so, the buildings yeah. and stuff like that would be more of a right. town focus. Okay. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, or extra, right. you know, things, but. Okay, so, so we'll retool this. So there was a question about the library's yeah, appropriation. They, they gave us a nice. Yeah. So is that, uh, we good with that? Yeah, I seem pretty good with it. I mean, I, yeah. I, I almost think that, in a, and I know we've done a pretty good job of, as these come, you know, updating, you know, these numbers, you know, like either permit numbers or just how we, okay, well, you've done this job for, you know, 40 years and you get $250 stipend, you know, like, so I think we've done a pretty good job of like identifying those and kind of bringing those numbers a little closer to present day as we see them, but you know, maybe we can make that another to-do list for us to look through at the turn of the year when we look through policies and you know, what are some of these 
you know, like you're saying, the library. It's been funded like that for, yeah. you know, probably ever, right? They probably, <laughs> they've probably kept that $2,500, you know, every year for the last 20 years, you know, I'd have to go back. Yeah, it's I, nice, that was I, nice, it was informative. You know. Yeah. Well, if that's, you know, if that's population based, evidently, but. The only thing I didn't get out of that sheet that, I know we didn't ask them directly, but kind of indirectly was, it would be really nice if they had, you know, kind of like a capital plan sheet like we have. And I know they provided they might. I don't their expenditures, but it would be nice to see like, okay, our uh, make it up. Our turnaround on computers is every six years. So every six years we've got to buy new computers, every, you know, periodical, whatever it is. And it'd be nice to kind of see if we put in $5,000 each year, how is that going to affect your expenditures? Or is there a year coming where you're going to need more? Or do we need a bigger, you know? Um, and they may. I could ask Lisa and Lisa. Because it almost sounds like still is they're just saying, well, this is kind of what we need to get by. Like, you know, like, well, and, and that's great, but how could we maybe do more with... That, and that feeds into a question I had, because I had requested a book that they didn't have and was wondering if they could get it with interlibrary loan. And they said that they didn't have that service. Now, I don't know if that's a financial thing or if that was a misunderstanding, uh, but it would seem to me that, especially in a small town, mm -hmm. to be able to borrow from an inter through a statewide interlibrary service, I would think would be critical. Yeah, and I I'll think find that's out. something we should. It, it'd be nice to see on some of those. Uh, call them appropriations, you know, uh, you know, what is the actual, you know, or how, how does what our do funding our fit into money? your grand <laughs> scheme but, of things? But so. that would be a service that I would support somebody funding. You know, like the Council the funding on, issue. yeah, the Council on the Arts is 2000, Bethel Historical Society is five, you know, like, how does that money affect you? And now we do know that the Bethel Historical Society of 500 wasn't even enough money because we ended up having to you know, bring the rent to zero so that they could, you know, keep afloat. So I think a lot of these are just numbers that have just been placeholders for years. You know, I mean, obviously, like, you know, yeah, but they send letters telling us what they're requesting. VLCT are. and stuff like that update their stuff every yeah, year. Course. But like some of the older ones are probably, you know, been but, there for a while. But yeah, and they send us letters asking, yeah. telling us how much they want. I mean, I assume they know this might be something more to take. You can ask. Lisa, yeah, they, we, we request for funds can get stuck in the rut too. True. All right. All right. Anything more budget-wise? For now, are we good with like viewing the budget at two percent or two cents on the the dollar, and and then we'll have a more up-to-date budget next time with. You should be able to vote on it next time, but Dave didn't. Final retirement and stuff like that. Yeah, I should. I'm hoping my email, but Dave, how do you feel about that? Well, I don't think it's any more than enough. We, I mean, I, we've all got the history of, of uh, our, one of our previous town managers who, who uh, had a budget level funded for years and years, and then all of a sudden we're half a million dollars in the hole, yeah. mm -hmm. and nothing's fixed. I mean, I, I, go, I look around, and the money you're talking about on, on roads is better, but the the grader is out grading ledge. It's true. And there's no gravel on our roads anymore. Mm. Uh, ditches um, right by my house where we used to have to uh, drive up onto the road. Now it's it's a foot or more to drive into the woods or the field. So mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've lost this much material. You're right. On all of our roads. And it would be millions of dollars to put it all back. So yeah. if Every little bit we put, in addition to, the boys can get out there and, and it's not going to happen in one year, it's not going to happen in five years, but, no. mm -hmm. but we need to move back. I think you're right, that's why I put $5,000 more in for ditching, and we just started the application process for more of those, um, because that's the state mandate, of course, is doing more of the um, hydrologically connected segments. I actually, mm -hmm. one of the ones on the top was, was right road, and um, so I just, wrote a grant with Rita before I left doing an estimate to do that. And, um, but you're right, 
we need to be putting gravel on the roads and we need to dig out the ditches you're right and that's why i put a little bit more in there and it's i'm hoping next year i can get farther like more footage and um and i know and so, i know we tweaked it a little bit last year i agree with and you, it Dave. doesn't show it doesn't show previous to the the 2019 budget but we had for quite a long time we had kind of a level funded like twenty five thousand dollars a year for gravel yeah. and then Teresa and i two years ago looked at yeah i had gotten some information from local roads or somewhere Maybe. that they talked Maybe. about how much how much per mile on gravel roads because anytime we talk about roads we talk about paved roads most of the time right but they started talking about like how much should you budget per gravel road and I think at that point that number came out to the forty-five thousand dollars that we yeah. increased it to. Mm -hmm. So we put like twenty thousand dollars a year more into that gravel road piece of it. But that's just to maintain, not that, to make up what you, you may have lost. You got to go a lot higher than that to gain. Yeah. yeah. That so and, and then kind of looking at right now, we got forty in there, so we could you know. Yeah, I mean, I think put five in there or something to bring it back up to the forty-five. Exactly. But I guess, and we um, and some of it too is I is. I feel like by contracting it out, we, sometimes we just get more done. It's a bigger machine. They can go faster. They can go farther. And by contracting, I have a little I have more say over it, how much gets done, what the budget that goes out, how much we can do. And we did, we ended up doing, um, you know, kind of a hybrid this year because we did like East Bethel. So we shouldn't have to technically go back for a few years now that that's done and paved. And so we have to do Gilead. The spring we ended up jumping up and doing something on brink because we had a mm. pretty big culvert to do so we ended up doing that because the equipment and it, it, it's funny there's a piece of my brain that thinks there was the road crew to just maintain and then you use contract staff to actually gain ground and get somewhere because if these guys in the winter plowing snow in the summer they're cleaning brush and doing um and, and grading and putting material, actually putting material on the road and doing maybe some smaller culverts, but then we have more contract staff. I mean, I could spend 50 in a summer, just like this year we did Sanders, we did some Brink, we did East Bethel, we did, you know, and then next year, and I have another Christian Hill is going out to bid in January. So, I mean, I'm always trying to run with grant money, but you know, I'm with, I, I'm of course, really the other thing too, the more that money I have in hired services, the farther I can get. Of course, typically your gravel right. budget and your paving budget usually are held hostage until you get through winter, right? So if you have a really bad winter where you dipped into more of your winter funds, then you do less graveling and less paving in the spring. So sometimes, you know, we might come out of a real rough winter and we had 45 in the budget, but now Therese is like, oh, we're going to make up 10 somewhere, you know? <laughs> so then it becomes 35, right? Which again doesn't get us down the road any farther, like we were talking about. But yeah, and this would be a good time to just yeah. ask the question about setting the plow height on gravel roads for maybe differently than you do on paved roads. I don't know how many wheelbarrows full of gravel I pulled out of my front yard last spring, but it was a lot. At least I thought it was a lot. Well, at least we didn't charge you for it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you didn't send him a bill for that? I said, the sand on Hard to know. I couldn't speak yeah. to that, frankly. That's yeah, no, it's just, beyond my... Yeah. But if, it, if they're running, scraping the road on a paved road, you really don't want to do that on a gravel road. And I'm not sure that they're doing that on the gravel road. They're not doing that on a gravel road. I think what you're getting is sand, maybe. I think that may be a great idea, but to, to drive up to the North Main Street, stop, pick the bottle up, reset your shoes, and go, that, that isn't going to work. But most so of the time... Because you're going to get, I think, an awful lot of complaints, because if you start picking those shoes up, you're just going to start leaving crap, and then pretty soon it's ice. But you most of... Have, I, I, I'll shovel the gravel out of my yard, which I haven't had to, sh I haven't had to move a wheelbarrow load in 15 years. Well, that's because you don't get, you don't have any gravel up there. That's why. That's true. <laughs> the other thing too is some See, of that. See, done. Is, it made you happy, right? Some of that is I sand. I still have gravel on my road. Some right? of that is sand and stuff coming yeah. off. Yeah. Be thankful you have gravel still, Jim. No, some of the rock yeah. the size of my yeah. Well, I think a majority of the time 
the road's frozen anyways, right? So it doesn't really matter. But you get that spring event when things are thawing, or, today. or the or early, today. yeah, or the fall I mean, event with the snow. That's when you get a lot of that today. material moving. So, yeah. Huh? I'm sorry. What? We have mud season out there today, but and, yeah, but oh, I, God, yeah. it's just yeah, a, just a comment from a yeah, <laughs> right, citizen. Okay. All right. So budget wise, we'll finish it up next time. Yep. And then we just want to. Finish our discussion in regards to the town warning. Yeah. So and, I've been... and then just a few things I just wanted to get out there on the town warning is, so typically every year the town warning is like the same. You know, it's it's the same sure. copy paste. You know, maybe hey, easy there. Well, no, no, but I mean, <laughs> usually kidding. it is. It's it's you know, it's a copy paste <laughs> exercise. You update it, it based upon, teasing. you know, just kidding. You know, it might be a two year seat versus a three year seat. I don't yeah, know. yeah, but, absolutely. Um, so this year our idea was just, you know, we had some potential ideas to put on the warning. Um, now, the easiest way for us as board members to see those on a warning is to put them on the warning, right? And I think there's a little bit of confusion out there right now with just because they're on this paper draft warning doesn't mean they're on the warning. So if we take them off, doesn't mean they were on the warning that we just got rid of it. It just means... Oh. This was kind of our open session of thought process of just like the budget, throw stuff on the wall. Do we want it? Do we not want it? Mm -hmm. And then we voted in to make it an official warning. So I just wanted to get that out there because it seemed like there was a little bit of confusion in the public eye on, um, you know, either concerns the, oh, why are we going to remove that off it? Well, yeah. it hasn't technically been on it yet. It's just kind of our, it's our, uh, it's just a it? draft. It's, it's cool. just a it's working, like, it's our working session board. Yeah. You know, because um, it makes it easy for us to see it. Yeah, so. I have to come up with something every year, and uh, I always go through it and make sure see if there's any changes. Uh, VLCT, mm -hmm. which is Vermont League of Cities and Towns, give you a sample. Has there been change in the legislation? And there has over the years. We used to vote on a on a grand juror and a town agent, and those are no longer. We don't ha do those mm -hmm. anymore. So sometimes there are changes within the year, and um, yes, if people bring up issues, sometimes I throw it on the warning just so I can be sure I've mentioned it to you or someone has mentioned something to me right. about it. Um, so I put that on here. Um, so last so time- It's just kind of a working document. Last time, and David, Dave wasn't here. Um, so we had, we had thoroughly talked about the retail marijuana piece of it, um, as well as we had talked about the two Australian ballot pieces which was the hybrid methods of either you know doing the budget through Australian ballot or doing the uh, candidates through Australian ballot is where is how we had it on there yep. um, and then and then Jean had brought up um, about the climate change um, coordinator I guess that some of the regional um, towns are either implementing or thinking about implementing um, as a as a method of moving the um, the Montpelier agenda down to the municipalities. So, um, so those were kind of the four things we were talking about. And, and then just correct me if I'm wrong. If I, it seemed like the board overwhelmingly um, was for not not bringing the retail marijuana piece to the warning. Um, so we, the four of us that were here all agreed on not moving forward with that for a couple of reasons. Well, one was there's still discussions being had at the state, still trying to iron some of these pieces out how they look. Um, and there has been no retail um, Request. requests in the works. So we just figured that we would just wait another year and you gotta put it on, we'll put it on. We and did have a discussion about, about <clears throat> we had someone who had a approach about cultivation. Right. And that's not covered that's by state the town. That's state regulated. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just think, I think it's important <clears throat> that we're clear and that I'm clear in my language that we are not opposed to retail cannabis there is just so much change and then do with COVID, we felt like that the council itself was trying to work out some of the details. And we had a list of towns, Randolph being one of them. So um, 
And it's not that we're opposed to it. It's just that we were kind of waiting for other towns to work out in the state to figure out all the legislation. So if we do do it next year, at least we have, there's like a history behind us of understanding exactly how it's going to work. Cause there's still some confusion, at least certainly in my mind. Um, and a large part of, the of that council and all that. And a large part of that mechanism wasn't necessarily, I mean, obviously it's allowing somebody to sell marijuana inside your town area. But the even larger piece that they leave off is it was really meant for a lot of the bigger municipalities that have local tax codes. So uh, Bethel doesn't have a local tax code, but if you were in, to make it up, Williston, Williston that has a 1% tax code, then by implementing that, not only are you allowing the sale of it, but you're allowing to collect that extra 1 cent tax. One. Yeah. Where yeah. Bethel doesn't have to worry about that so you know so i guess that was another piece we had talked about and i think there was some still issue about that whether you could become a tiff district just because of cannabis or not and um so i think yeah. there was still some there to figure out because you couldn't obviously if you be created a tiff district to take that extra tax it affects everybody mm -hmm. you know all businesses in town so it definitely and, and then we talked about the australian ballot pieces which was you know, uh, voting from the floor, voting by Australian ballot, or some type of hybrid method. Um, and I think, you know, we, we probably were a little more divided on that one. Um, the Australian ballot piece for the budget articles themselves, we, the four of us had agreed that we thought that we didn't want to put that on the warning, that that was best served in person. Um, but then we were split when it came to Australian ballot by officers or um, those pieces that we had. Um, so we didn't uh, take any, well, we didn't really take any action no, on any didn't. of them. That was just kind of a, a pre-tally vote. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of where. The thing I came, the realization I came to actually just a few hours ago is I found myself getting hung up or spending more time thinking about whether or not I thought Australian ballot was a good idea or not, as opposed to what we're, what we're doing here is deciding whether we want to put it out there for the town right. to discuss and right. decide. Yeah. Uh, it's not, if I, I will get a chance to voice my opinion the day of the vote. If, it, if the town says, you know, sure. if we put it out there and, the, and we have a vote, then I can exercise my opinion at that point. Absolutely. But I was getting all hung up with whether or not I thought Australian ballot versus in person was, a, was, a, better, idea was a better idea or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was getting too hung up with that part of it and, and kind of forgot the part that we're putting this out there, there'll be a discussion. There'll be people that stand up for it, against it. The town, the people at the town meeting will, will vote. And, and yes, it's not a big representative, uh, a good you know, cross section of the town, but it, it, it is what it is. Exactly. That's a great case way to put it. Off, you know, uh, it is what it is. You're right. If they came, people, they came. If people want to come in and have a more a vocal discussion or a more, then come to the town meeting. And, and do that, have that discussion. But I don't think we can ever go wrong with putting it out there to let the, the taxpayers make the decision instead of us making the decision. And, yeah. and you're, you're certainly serving a, a population that, I mean, the people that come to town meeting, I know that is a large, that seems to be the largest fear, and that's probably what you hear too, Paul, I imagine, mm -hmm. is that people are afraid we're gonna lose town meeting. I think that's a fear that some people have is that we'll lose that sense of community and voting and, and um, you know, the way able to discuss and kind of hash things out as a group. So yeah. I'm, well, that's what I hear. Is that what you hear? That oh, yeah. It, yeah. No, I mean, it, it can, you know, we've all heard, you know, we've seen and heard some of the conversations that are being had where you basically could eliminate town meeting yeah. and just do everything Australian ballot. And, like last year. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and I don't, I don't want to see that go away. I think it's important for the townspeople to come together in that format, young, old, whoever can get there um, to uh, take part in it. 
-hmm. No, I mean, I, I agree with you, Paul, and I, I, you know, I was a, a no vote on the Australian ballot stuff when we were talking last, you know, two, two weeks ago. But, I mean, I think mine isn't on, you know, the voters' rights to vote on something. Mine is more the formality of the warning. And, and what I mean by that is typically the warning is, like we said, boring, right? <laughs> it's, the warning is the warning. Like every year, it's mostly the same things on there. Unless there's something special that comes up, like it might be uh, exuberant cost that we didn't anticipate, like making up a water bond or something that we need to put on there that's different than normal. But I think the thing that I'm worried about most is, you know, is just throwing stuff on the warning without knowing what people want. Um, and, and that's why I had been open to. Australian ballot, but also open to, you know, let's let's put a questionnaire out there and get exactly what it is. You know, if if we put it out there and get back 400 people and 350 people say we want Australian ballot by by candidate, then we put that on the warning. You know what I mean? So it's like a more direct piece because where does it stop? I mean, you know, if, not just Australian ballot, but where does it stop on anything? To putting it on the warning. You know, if it's you know. And you were looking for a bigger sample size because you felt that the town well, meeting, I mean, the town report goes to every registered voter and every right. property owner. So I got the impression you were also looking for a larger sample size than just because technically hundred and some odd people. Right, because technically, if we do it right now, we put it on the warning, right? And you know, will you get a few extra people, maybe because it's a topic? But I mean, traditionally, we're two hundred people, right? Two hundred yes. people come and vote, and you know. Where if we send it out to the, you know, the whole listing, you know, you may get back 400 or 500, you know, questionnaires that say, this is what we would like to see, or, you know, whatnot. But, um, but the other thing too is I don't understand what the big rush is. Like, if we did this year versus if we did next year, what is the big rush? Like, you know, what is the burning? We aren't the only ones who put, can put things on the warning. I mean. I right. believe the statute says if 5% of the voters put in a petition, a petition to have that on there, we will have to put it on there. Only, so, you know, go ahead, finish. There is, you Only right, certain things, though. Only things that the town residents, like, you, they couldn't say to you, they couldn't pass a petition that says they want to put a dog park on the warning. Oh, no, 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 no. But Only but things that they have, item, this particular item. Yes, yeah, right, particular absolutely. item, mm -hmm. they, if these people that want this right. really want it, dig down and get the 50 people or whatever they need to sign a petition and it's on the warning. Mm. It's not, it, yes, we can decide, but they can decide too if they really, if they really want this, they can make that decision too. That's so, true, Dave, there is So absolutely. my concern is I, I, I hear and I read things and all this, but I don't see anybody doing anything to make it happen. You know, you want it? Work for it a little bit. That, that's where I'm at. And by the way, I'm against both of them. So when you come back to vote, you know. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, I do. Uh, I don't yes, know, I, there's a mechanism for it. I think we all kind of have, you know, there's positives and negatives of anything, right? And it's, it's not so much what, how we feel the, the result of whatever it might be will be there it's more you know it's more getting a large sample size because I mean pretty much at this point other than I bet you I've talked to I don't know 15 or so people in the town that I know like and we've had what a sample population of about five at each meeting that we took you know so I mean you know I'm yeah. it's hard to gear gear it on 25 people you know um, you know, how, how can we get the most uh, bang for a buck? We talked about but not, those, yeah, but not only doing a survey, but doing like a survey monkey, and you can have multiple things where you can collect it. But there was also, it wasn't just for that, there was, there's a few different um, pieces, and I don't know where I had, had written it down at some point, but we had the, you know, the Australian ballot piece, there's the marijuana piece, there was the, what am constable. I? Constable. Oh, uh, you know, if we want to go to a full-time constable, and there was other people um, that might So there was a couple other things, and I had mentioned something like doing something similar to like the Doyle poll, like 
here are four or five things that we are, um, you know, contemplating putting on a warning or doing something in the budget. We want to get your information so that we can see, you know, if overwhelming people want to see it, then, I mean, we're, we're voted in here to do what pe the majority of the people in town want to yeah, and, see, you know, and you're so. not, those aren't the only questions. I actually had a couple committees. I think the recreation, I think it was rec, and um, yeah, we got definitely like the pool the planning. And... Uh, the, as part of, as a member of the planning commission, we wanted to put a question or two on there because you know we're rethinking zoning regulations oh, yeah, and always yeah. working on the town plan. So there are other committees that wanted to get if you end up doing that. And, and I did tell piggyback on. So far, I've kind of asked Kelly and uh, Penny. Sorry, as Spalding president, I just said so far we're going to leave that back page so that it's one-sided and maybe put the town's return address on the back. But in case you want to do that, so someone can cut it out if you and, and maybe you do a survey anyways. I don't know, but um, so there was other interest in that. So, but um, yeah, I, so I, I don't think that 14 um, would be able to. Someone couldn't pass a petition for that because that's not something that would be things that you can pass a petition for. Things that would have to go in front of the voters anyways, and that's not one of them. Um, that's, you could, you could do that in your own budget. I'm sorry, what, uh, So 14, um, shall they, if you wanted to establish a staff position, I don't think you could pass, I don't believe a petition would be, could be passed for that. Okay. Because a petition can be passed only, the, it, it, someone could pass one, but it doesn't mean the select board has to act on it. You only have to act on things that normally have to go in front of the voters. Voters rights issue. Like, yeah. um, Cannabis, okay. uh, Australian ballot, that sort of thing. Because that you could pick up in your own budget. You could just say, hey, we're going to throw X amount of dollars in for this position in the future. Um, but so anyways, um, does anyone have any changes, misspellings, corrections, well, grammar? I, I just, I just want to comment. I think people have exerted effort in the appropriate place, which is right now is before the select board whether or not the select board wants to put on the town warning questions of Australian ballot. Uh, and, and I think there have been people, including the select board members, uh, who have uh, suggested that having the population vote is an appropriate thing to do. Uh, if, is it something that has to be voted at a town meeting? Uh, and uh, I don't think, personally, I think if it is warned and if it is adequately promoted, uh, the town will speak and that's the survey that counts, uh, whether it's this year or next year. Um, and so I would you know, reiterate my support for, I think it's 12, that the officers be elected by Australian Dow. Uh, it provides the greatest accessibility to the greatest number of citizens. Therese, can you differentiate for me the difference between Australian ballot and absentee ballot? Sure. If you had, um, for example, the what um, I have, the, I was, I, we call, I call it in my head hoot and holler, but you're voting from the floor. If you're voting from the floor, um, like you do currently, there is no absentee ballot. You have to be present. You have to be present to vote. It, unless it's like the school, right? The school does an, app, does, um, an Australian ballot for their officers and, and maybe their budget. I'm not familiar with their no. no, just their, their officers. So if you have an Australian ballot, like the school does, and like we do for the governor, then you can get an absentee ballot. If you vote solely off the floor, you have to be on the floor. You have mm -hmm. to vote that day. So that's the difference between absentee and uh, so, so if, you, if you're a hoot and holler, vote from the floor, you have to be there. But and the only other time you'd have an absentee ballot is if you had an Australian ballot. So if you okay. voted Australian ballot, um, then yes, people can get an absentee, just like they have for you know any other election. Um, 
So anyways, since it's 7.33, I assume that you want to just go through and, um, so everybody's okay with items one through, is there anybody has a problem with items one through 11? Obviously I know there's blanks because we still got to do the budget. And Did you I check to, to make sure those dates were not like Sundays I, or I looked, I, Saturdays I'll, or Sundays? I'll double or? check, but I looked before. But, um, and I know I have dates. to update with uh, the Human Services Board numbers now, but is there any issues with items <clears throat> one through 11? Didn't we have, wasn't there like number eight more specific as to highway department or something like that? It used, I think you may, eight? you may have years ago, um, but because you vote one budget, you don't vote, um, some towns do vote just for the highway budget and just for, but it all goes into the general fund okay. because you don't, I mean, there's a statute about it, but. I think it's, there's some folks that may have seen it the other way. When, when years ago, but you've been voting this way. That means. Yeah. You've been voting this way for, this morning has been like this for a while. Um, but I did see an old one, Dave, because I was looking for something for from a 2016 and it did look a little bit different, but it doesn't really make sense to vote them separately in the sense that I mean, you could, we could do highway separately because they're not tracked in a separate fund, but um, I can go back and look. So I'll double check, Dave, that I didn't miss anything this year, but I think it was this way last year, but I'll okay. double check. Okay. Highway separate question mark. Um, but I did see it in like 2016 it was. And I do think that um, another town we used to vote them separately, but I'll double check, maybe I cut, maybe I cut and pasted something wrong. And nine, I'll update with the um, current numbers that we just received. Um, now we have a better, we did get numbers from Steve Webster, so I have an updated number for the White Valley Ambulance I can put in there. Um, mm -hmm. And I had checked the dates before, but I'll double check my dates for, um, it does get a little confusing for people if we go 15, 16, 15. We give people a grace period now anyways of three yeah, days, so. Sure. Um, and then number 12 is, shall the voters elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 BSA? What do you want to do, just go on the table? Sure, yeah, we can. You missed what Therese said. Well, I guess we could just take a hand vote on, on you know, 12 and 13. End of it, yeah. All right, so 12, shall the voters elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 BSA? Raising our hand, do we want to see it on the morning, or you just, or you could just do one at a time. You want to see it on the morning? Yes. This would be a yes. So Jean says yes. Yes. Paul says yes. No. Yes. Chris says no. I say no. Dave Lindsay says no. Lindsay says yes. Okay, so we're gonna put the officers are going on the ballot. Okay. Then, shall the voters adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 1750? I think you all agreed no on this. No. That's no. 13 is budget item. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, did you say no? I said Yeah, oh, you said, thank you, Paul. Hard to pass. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, so budget is not Okay, going now on. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> if, if this is solely about, if Australian ballot is solely about individuals are having a better opportunity to voice in this case vote then why would you do one yes and one no i mean so so in this case what you're going to have now is you're going to have if you go on last year's numbers you're going to have 450 people they're going to show up to vote australian ballot if it went through australian ballot for the candidates right next year not this coming year, right probably year up. but then you're going to have 200 people that are going to come and do the the budget Right. in person yeah. so if this is really about you know if this is really about everybody having this opportunity to which which again nobody will ever change my opinion on this but everybody has the opportunity to get down there and vote on town meeting day yeah and and i know everybody has an excuse in the book why they can't do it but i have been here for 15 16 years now i have a family i brought my own babies there my own kids there yeah. single dad you name it i have done it you know, it's just like, oh, I can't get on the select board because X, Y, Z. Well, you know what? I'm on the select board. I'm on, you know, I'm a full-time single parent. I go to all my kids' basketball games. There is a way you can do this. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but for people to say they don't have the time or they got a million other excuses, can't get time off from work, can't pay for this, can't, don't have transportation, there is a way. Every year, I plan ahead of time. I tell my employer that I need Tuesday off. You know, I... 
I have it all planned out. Yeah. You know, years ago, I used to take the day off from work, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's just like, it's, mm. it's no different than the committee things. There's a million excuses why people can't come to committees, you know, can't be a part of committees. But, mm. you know, I'm sorry, you yeah. can be there. But uh, in this case, it's like, why say yes to one and no to the other? I like, think why not put them all on there? Well, I if think it's about that, accessibility, put all of them on there. I think that for some people, it might be that if they vote for the an officer Australian ballot, they may feel that that person is down the road going to, I don't know if they feel maybe they'll protect them to going through the budget as far as if they, if they elected me, then they know I am fiscally conservative. So they're thinking, okay, she's cheap. So if we elect her, she's gonna help keep a handle on the budget and through the budget year. So maybe, um, just playing, you know, answering, a possible option for Chris's question is maybe some people, um, I think there's some people who want to see everything Australian ballot anyways, um, but, I, for, but for maybe for people who just want us to see the officers, it could be, that also too, you're giving it to the voters, they could all vote it down because they're the same 200 people that come every year, they all may say, no, forget it, we're here, but maybe it helps them feel like they're choosing a candidate that's going to help them with the other things. So I don't, but I there's, don't know. There, there's also a it's lot a of thought. misinformation out there, and I'm sorry, and I, I talked to one individual that is very strong about Australian ballot in this town and gave me a, a bunch of really good reasons why we should have Australian ballot and, and made the thing and said, you know, a majority of the towns in the state of Vermont are Australian ballot and why are we not? So I said, well, I'm going to go look, look this up. So I've been doing some information or looking through it. So there's... You know, and this, this is how fast nowadays somebody tells somebody and now it becomes a fact, right? Right. So, so I was under the assumption that Bethel was kind of one of a kind. Maybe there's only a couple of us that we still do everything from the floor. That's the way I thought it was. So I went and looked up, and you can look it up right up uh, through the um, state of Vermont. So there's 237 towns in the state of Vermont. Can anybody tell me, random guess, of how many of those towns do... Australian ballot a year. Is it 45? I was going to say 45? 50. Yeah. I was going to say 50. But that's not a majority of the I towns. Know. I know. No, Four, I'm thinking, there's 43 oh, I'm towns that do Australian ballot in Vermont. Oh, I thought I was thinking and, like 50%. And if you look at where those towns are at, they're all in major populated centers that can't possibly put people in a building, right? Burlington, South Burlington, Williston, I mean, basically Chittenden County, Barry City, Rutland Town. Okay. you know big ones I figured it'd be like 50% and then do you know how many do you know how many towns vote a hundred percent from the floor in Vermont a year well it's got to be like 200 then. there's 74 towns so there's 74 towns so there's over a, th there's a third of the towns that vote from the floor everything from the floor no kidding and then there's a, then the rest of the towns have some sort of hybrid thing going and that's why I've been like, instead of throwing it on there, let's figure out what that hybrid thing is and then put it on the warning. You know what I mean? It's like, right. so some of them do like, uh, you know, vote the budget from the floor, or vote, you know, so there's different hybrid methods to it. But, yeah. but there's so many people out there. It's just, you know, like wow. Australian ballot, everybody's doing it. Like we need to do it too. And I'm like, okay, and I'll look into it. And then I look and I'm like, oh, there's not many people are doing everything 100% Australian ballot, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting. I didn't realize. I figured it would have been a much higher percentage. I do know some towns who do a hybrid. Like yeah. I say hybrid, meaning the fact that they do officers, but um, not the budget. I did know one New Haven switched to the budget, and it was. And it was funny, is it, it all still passed, but you missed that discussion because, like we experienced last year, um, we had at our one meeting there was like 15 people there, and then when we had our informational meeting. There was the six of us and three others. <laughs> so, right. so for us, we were like, well, you know, we put so much thought and effort and work into the budget um, and we didn't get very much feedback. That's one thing I will say, like it or not, you get feedback uh, from the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's, it's scary, but um, well, I think there's a lot to be said too about making amendments to the budget from the floor. Uh, to me, it feels like one of the most important pieces that 
individual citizens can actually affect change directly on that day. And a great example is, what was it, like three or four years ago when from the floor we appropriated an additional $10,000 towards the skate park. That couldn't have happened by a, an Australian ballot vote, and I feel like that is not only something that's lost, but it, it's, it's a bigger loss than just there's no discussion. It's the loss is that the, the will of the people actually can't get vocalized. So it's not just that there's no discussion, it's that you, you actually squash the voice of the people in, in that direct context. I think it's a little different with the elected officers. The difference there is you can't nominate somebody from the floor day of. So they have to have a little bit of sense that they want the position, that they want to run, that they're, you know, they're essentially putting their name in. And sort of to answer Chris's question is like, to me, that is the big difference, is the, the voice of the people has more impact when it comes to the budget and losing, losing that voice by going to Australian ballot feels so much bigger to me than the loss of the ability to nominate a, a candidate from the floor. Right, like, okay, so a candidate needs to know they want to be a candidate and put their name in and do the appropriate measures, and then the vote happens. And I think, like, like Paul was saying this meeting and Gene last meeting is, really, this is going to the voters. It's my personal opinion is not to include the budget because I feel that that loss is so much greater to our general population. I think it's still going to be a hard sell to the voters that are present because if you when you look around, I've only, you know, I've been to, what, three, maybe, four? I've lost track how many Bethel town meetings, but whenever, um, I guess it was last year, it's always the same people. So I, I you know, I mean, there's a lot of the same people um, that go to town meeting. And there was a big outpouring last year, people who really missed it, even though um, some people had put together that really nice option of, of the untown meeting, which was great. And, um, but so it, it'll certainly, be interesting it, to see how it goes. I mean, I, and I understand what Lindley's saying, but then I have to come back to the whole point where, you know, if we're talking about the voice of the people, so we're, again, yeah, just the, I'm doing a, devil's advocate yeah. again, Anya, is we're okay with 450 people coming out to vote for candidates, but then we're okay with 200 people changing things on town meeting day, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if it's yeah, truly about the voice, say it. Like, say it's truly about the voice. Don't, also forgetting, can't play though, both. If this comes up for a vote at town meeting, it could say, no, the time to say no. No, yeah. we don't want sure, to do it. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And everybody says, okay, fine. But at least we've had a vote. Yeah. In whatever size representation yeah. it is, at least it's been a vote of the public and not a I, I was trying to look back. I, you know, I only... <clears throat> I have two, for whatever reason, I have two years where I don't have my books. They were from like 2008 or nine. but I, I could have sworn, didn't we vote on an Australian ballot one year at I, town meeting day? I'd have to go back and look. I don't I know. I think so. Wow. Like about 10 years ago or so, 12 yeah, maybe? Might be even more. But I, I remember but voting I on one when I first came to town. I was trying to find it, and for whatever reason, I... I don't know, didn't save those two years I'll or whatever. I'll have to look at those. I, do you know if it got resoundingly voted down? Do you know? I, I know it remember? got voted down. I yeah. just can't remember. Yeah. I was trying to look to see if, like, you could see the, you know, the vote tally and stuff. And <clears> I, right. Yeah. I couldn't find the two years yeah. that well, I think but. I think okay. it will be interesting to see what happens this year. Yeah. But I would also suggest that we might want to think about holding the town meeting at a different time so that, or day of the week, so that we can, for those who are hourly workers, who, for whom taking a day off may mean literally a day of lost pay, I think that there is a, a significant drawback and the barrier to their participation. If we were to, for example, have the meeting on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, 
Uh, we Gene, may have lot, different people. Those, there's lots of studies out there, Gene. Yeah. yeah. A lot of this research has been done and yeah. didn't show any significant change in numbers that show up, type of people. That, like, th yes. this has been done throughout Vermont, and yes. you can go and find this, this research. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I, I uh, know that we've They've tried, like, Saturdays or, yeah. or Let me say, Tuesday okay, nights. I or, hear that. But if we were to have it, at a time when most people are not of working age are not at work the argument that they could choose to attend would be stronger and i don't think it negatively impacts those who can choose to attend who are retired or farmers or whatever uh, who would who may are a more able to attend on a weekday morning. I just, uh, it may be a different group of people. It will be. But you know, your, the accessibility. Your farmers I, won't be there. Well, well it's like, like, well, a perfect example of this is you take the, it's been done. take, take the, the town the versus the school. A, a good example every year is take the town meeting versus the school meeting, right? And I go to both of them and from what I see, this is my observation, is when I go to the town meeting, um, there uh, usually is a little bit larger of uh, retirement population. Um, and then when I go to the school meeting in, in the evening, there's usually a couple of families that show up that weren't there in, in the morning. But the numbers are almost the same. I mean. Actually, in some cases, the school meeting has been less than the town meeting, and it's at a you know a six o'clock, and that's where Lindley was saying they've you know not just Vermont but across the country they've done all these different um, examples of like Saturday and Sunday and Tuesday night and mm -hmm. Wednesday morning, and sometimes they get a little bit different sample population, but most of the time it's the same like the same results. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you know what time is, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I I'm not right. arguing to increase the numbers. I'm trying to increase the accessibility. But I, I think, Gene, the, the, and, counter, and, the counter argument then becomes, what about all the people who work on a Saturday? What about, like, it, it sort of negates itself. And <laughs> I've, gone, I've gone around this argument multiple times with different people, and I feel like every single time it kind of concludes out that you're always going to exclude a certain subset of people so if we change it and even i know towns have even looked at do you do one year on a tuesday and one year on a saturday or one year mm -hmm. during the morning and one year during the evening and it actually worsened results when they when they changed it to try to give you know this group more accessibility this year like there, there's always going to be and, some level and of one accessibility. thing that was it's interesting true. is years ago but at the school they were trying to get more input at the school here and and they had uh, an informational session, and, and the big thing was childcare. We can't come because we don't have childcare. So the school started doing childcare. And guess how many extra people came? Nothing. Yeah. You know, there was like, and, and, and I dropped my two kids off because I was there, and I didn't really need childcare, but they were there to hang out with the other kids, and there was only like one or two kids there. Yeah. You know, so there was. Curse. I think the Girl Scouts have done that before. Yeah, so, um, so do you guys want to move to 14? Because it's I, 8 o'clock, almost uh, 8. Yes. Therese was just saying. Well, no. What? Just, I mean, you, town meeting. Yeah, yeah the I, Girl Scouts. I simply want, I did not say in an evening, like the school board, 6 o'clock is dinner time for my kids and my grandchild. They're getting home from work and trying to get food on the table and then trying to get the kid to bed. This is not a time for having a community meeting, community-wide. Now, uh, that's, it's simply, when you have young kids at home, there are going... Yeah. My kids are at home right you. now and I'm at this community God, meeting. God, so, bless, I mean, I, God bless you. Again, you're not... I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'll keep it the same. You guys right. can vote. Um, right. God, God bless you. I'm just saying that there are times of the week that are more accessible to more people than sometimes the, the than answer, others. The 
the answer that I've been, been pushing to other folks is we need to stop arguing about it. We need to go to Kirk and, and Dick and whatever and town meeting day is a state holiday and all employers will pay their employee to go to work, to go to the meeting. But I will tell you, Don't get any extra employer, <laughs> I told my employee mm -hmm. that if he wanted to choose the op to go to town meeting, I would pay him. I'm a jerk, and if you don't want to go, you're not getting paid. You know what he chose? To go stolen. Yeah. You know, so but that's a good point. I think that's I a good point about to go to but, but again, uh, okay. you know, I, we could get wrapped up in this forever, but yeah, another example good. is, you know, if we go to Zoom, we're going to have all these extra people. Hello, people. And there's three, <laughs> right? There's usually five, now we have three. No, but I'm just saying, there's always excuses, sorry, excuses reasons why we can't go yeah, to reasons, stuff. Yeah, reasons, right. And, you know, it... Yeah. Uh, okay. I want to reiterate, accessibility so. is different from numbers attending. Yep. More people are have it accessible because of Zoom, mm -hmm. whether they choose to take part or not. True. All right, so the 14, number 14, is uh, shall the voters of Bethel establish a staff position reporting to the town manager? I copied this directly from Randolph, uh, to, to, cause, uh, from the information that Gina provided, which was handy, to develop the plan, process, and procedures across all town departments to meet town climate change action goals, knowing uh, that there's no money in this current budget. So let's just, we'll continue the round the table. Uh, Jean, do you want that on the... No, but here's why. Uh, okay. If we put it on the ballot and it's voted down, then it ties our hands to the select board to consider such a position to be voted on budget-wise yeah. the following year. Okay. And budget-wise, it would have to be voted on the following year anyway. Yes, exactly. Yeah, great. Okay, perfect. Paul? No. Chris? No. Lindley? No. Okay. There and we I go. agree with Jean, and I just also wanted to just throw in there that, you know, I still believe because of our size of our town and the limited pieces of infrastructure that we have that, that we can make those changes inside our already approved town plan and through our select board and town manager. So for us to contract with somebody or split a piece, I think that we can, as we are going, you know, a combination of the select board, our town manager, and buy-in, you know, it would be nice to have some buy-in from the energy committee on, you know, hey, when you're, when you're looking for, I'll uh, make it up, a new truck, you know, these are some, maybe not policy, but here are some options that we should be looking for, or, or if we're going to build something, these are, you know, energy efficiency options that we should be including in our purchase or our build. And, you know, I, I mean, I could see, I, I read through everything that you sent, and I mean, if I'm the town of Hartford, you're probably going, whoa, well, we got all this stuff, because Hartford's got dozens of buildings and hundreds of, you know, town vehicles, and that's a, that's a large, like, undertaking, where Bethel, we have, you know, half a dozen vehicles and four it's, buildings, you know. It's, it's precisely because we are small and do not have the capacity for some things that I think it may be very helpful if we were to have a shared staff. We don't have the expertise. We don't have the staff capacity. We don't have the volunteer capacity. Uh, the energy committee is strapped right now with Bethel for All. Uh, the energy committee, oh, just the, yeah, the chair. Nicole is well, because I, she volunteered so, to be the, but, yeah. You know, we don't have the volunteer uh, capacity. Right. Uh, so, uh, all of the more reason, from my perspective, <laughs> to say, no, we're small. Right. We don't have the capacity for a full time position like Hartford did. Right. But if a possibility came of sharing in that expertise and, and yeah. planning capacity, that would be great. That's why we're part of. T-Rock. Right, uh, exactly. And hopefully that comes out down the road. So just to be clear for people on Zoom, in case you aren't being able to hear very well, sorry for that. 
Um, so the select board on the warning is going to go the vote Australian ballot on the officers, yes, but the budget, no. So if that is a question, it looks like Christy has her hand up. Do, can she? And that's, and that's not for this year. And that's not for this year. So I should, yes, thank the, you, The Paul. vote would go on the, the warning. The vote happens right. this year, but it won't be until the following year. So this if year, everything is still hoot and holler. Right. And if it passes, right. it would be the following. If it doesn't pass, then, then it doesn't pass. <laughs> so I just wanted to be clear in case you couldn't hear very well, and I apologize for that. We're still making sure that works. But Christy, I think, has her hand up. Yeah, great, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, great. Uh, well, I'm going to say the, the, the sound quality is fantastic on my end as well. So Oh, good, here, thank here. you. I'm really, I'm, I'm digging it. And I just, I felt really compelled to say out loud, because I've heard a few folks say this a couple of times, pointing out that, um, oh, well, we offered, you know, we tried something that was recommended, and then there was only like three more people that showed up. And, and I have to really reiterate what Gene is saying, because it's that important, that we need to be really careful about making assumptions. It's really about access. It's not about we've, in, we've multiplied the numbers of people showing up. I think that comes in time if we're if we're demonstrating ourselves as open and accessible to new ideas and new ways that will come. But I would be real. I would want to caution us to to use that always as a reason to not try something new. And I'm really excited that you were willing to do the Zoom equipment and you know go after this. And I'm so excited and proud of us of a town for taking this step. I think we look look pretty wicked cool. And so. <laughs> you know, what it will do for access and just having the patience to see that evolve is, I just want to say that out loud because um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about the energy where we're headed and I don't want us to lose sight of that and get discouraged because well, only three people are here. Yeah, well, last time I was here, there were, there were a couple more. So, you know, I think just keeping that in mind and that frame of reference will really go a long way for us. And I appreciate you letting me make the comment. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Christy. That is something to keep in mind. I think for us, you know, we always like participation because, you know, if there's criticism later, we don't work in a vacuum. We always try to, you know, put the packet out. And then, of course, we were all doing Zoom meetings for, oh, you know, during COVID and things. But, um, I appreciate you saying that, you know, I hadn't really looked at it that way as it just takes a little while to get out. I mean, we feel like, you know, we, we were doing it, of course, during COVID and then we were luckily enough to go back to in person and, and um, you know, for us, it's hard because, you know, it's what we do all the time. And so we want more, you know, participate, see more faces on Zoom, see more faces in the audience. and. And, um, but, I, but I think that's a great point. So thank you for saying that. And I'm also glad you can hear because Orca has done an amazing job um, helping do this. If it wasn't for them, I'd be using sock puppets. So it would be, so it's good. Can you do the sock puppets anyway? I know, sock puppets. <laughs> do you do that with your kids? I don't you know. It's, it would be bad. Um, so we're good with all the warnings. Yep, items. we're good, good with that. All right. Then, as we had talked about last time, we were going to put the interlocal agreement discussion. Um, uh, we had talked about it. So I don't know, March. Is that when we started it? Yeah. Um, so you know, we are we are partners with the town of Royalton at the solid waste facility. There, we jointly own these property, and we. We have an interlocal agreement for the managing of the activities on that property. Um, yep. So some of the issues that we have been encountering there um, for quite some time and brought to light about a year ago was um, more on the financial end of things and the financial responsibilities due to the interlocal agreement and how the town of Bethel fit into that and to the point we were owed you know, a significant amount of money that wasn't getting repaid to us because we were kind of doing all the, you know, we're kind of doing all the clerical checkbook, uh, yeah. you know, payroll um, functions. Yeah, because it's um, our tax ID number. So we had, we had 
a meeting in March, I'll say, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it was February, maybe it was April, but we had a joint meeting with both boards um, and, uh, you know, we ironed out a few things on the interlocal agreement that, you know, for a while had been kind of gray spots in it. And this agreement was put together in the 80s? Was it 70s? And, um, well, yeah, you purchased. So, uh, and, and we've, you know, over the years we've had uh, some different issues there with either managing, we've had, um, I don't know, multiple times we've had some embezzlement issues over the years, we've had um, some clerical issues uh, through past administrations, uh, we've had money come up missing, we've, yeah, uh, you know, a bunch of things. So, um, so once a year we're allowed to, well, once a year, the contract automatically renews. Um, and up until that point, we have the option to, by then, exercise our right to pull out of the agreement if we want to. So usually, I don't think we've even talked about it for years, because um, it's just been a thing that just happens. And uh, But the more we've talked about this year with, you know, some of the short-term and long-term uh, issues or focuses down there, um, we want to circle the wagons, uh, you know, November, December, talk about this. How did things go? Do we feel comfortable staying in it? Do we want to get out? Mm -hmm. Now, for the town's citizens, if Bethel is a joint partner in this operation or not, it really doesn't change any day-to-day -day operations for any of our citizens to go there and do any of their business. Um, so, it, you know, if we hear us, oh, the town has decided we're gonna pull out, that doesn't mean that we can't bring our, our, nothing changes there, other than down the road, you know, we wouldn't be financially obligated, you know, to make ends meet there when there's issues. Um, you know, a downfall obviously would be, we wouldn't have a say in the day-to-day -day operations anymore. Um, but I don't know how much say we really have there. Now. Sure enough. So it seems like, you yeah. know, you know, we have a board and we have members of the board, but it doesn't seem like there's really a whole lot of weight weight there, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, and then you have the standard, but <laughs> you probably feel the same way. So. Yeah, and now you have the new garbage. So yes, you have to decide whether you have to give notice by January first to Royalton if you want to terminate the agreement. And you're right, mm -hmm. you still pay the alliance fee. But let's be clear about this too, so everybody understands, is it was, you will always have the liability of the landfill. Yes. You have a, the post closure of the landfill will always be Bethel's. Right. Um, there's well testing, there's annual maintenance of that because there's an exclusion on your insurance policy. So if you ever had an issue, it's an issue. And that will always remain an issue for mm -hmm. Bethel, the landfill. But if you were to pull out of the or give notice you want to terminate the contract on the transfer station, uh, that's a different kettle of fish. And I, if, it, it, just a quick question, did you just pass, did you pass the budget Jen presented you? Okay, so then we should talk about a couple things to keep in mind. Is one is Jen has, is, has put in her letter of resignation. Jen will resign as of March 5th. Um, in the budget that went forward, the only, I, she asked me to help her give her some scenarios with finances. She told me the percentage she wanted to give employees. Mm. I calculated retirement, workers' comp, et cetera, for her, she used that number. There's no money in there for building maintenance. We know there's an issue, several issues. We, we know that for a fact, that building needs a couple hundred, 300 grand worth of work from, from an estimate that we received from a, a waste, solid waste facility. I should, I should actually amend my statement. We approved the budget. We made some amendments to the budget. Okay. Um, which do actually include some for building maintenance. I don't know if you. I Just like a couple money. hundred bucks or? No. Uh, <laughs> a couple bucks. million. So basically we upped, we upped our revenue instead of leveling it at a million for uh, fees, we put it at 1.1 million, which gave us another 100,000 to yeah. Uh, move around the budget and we're right now we're on target as, as Jerry projected if we stayed with the revenue that we've made thus far this year Yeah, we'd make about 1.4. So we felt it was uh, still fairly conservative to stick with 1.1 Yeah, um, knowing that we've you know 
in the last fiscal year we did 1.1 yep. um, and then this year we're on target to exceed that yeah um, and so then we ended up and I'm not gonna remember that's okay a lot but of you... details but we upped some of the the maintenance for the okay. building and something else I was going to see if you there was two, there were two things we we like that building maintenance and maybe equipment or your scales no not scale because I know there's a couple of things that are mm. that are that are big but I'm, I'm glad that you've addressed it to some extent and yeah. yes we you know the number that Jen projected I don't blame her COVID it, it really went up and it's hard to know what that balance is going to be mm -hmm. I also uh, did you did you increase the facility manager's salary? Yes. Oh, that's what we did. We, we, and went, added. To, we went to a living wage for all employees. Um, so we actually upped everybody. To the percentage that she recommended. Yeah, beyond the 3%. We okay. The, it, that was the second one. So it was okay. facilities maintenance and the living wage option, but we still stuck with the 10% alliance fees increase. Okay. So. And so you'll still be looking for a new facility manager. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's my guesstimate that if you're looking, you know, if you pull in someone who's been in the solid waste business, that they're going to make a bigger salary. But I will say this again. I have said this since I came to Bethel, and I will say it again. You should not be in the trash business or the solid waste business. That is my personal opinion. I had to close a landfill in another town. And there are people out there, uh, Casella, Abel, and there's big companies out there who do trash. And we don't. And I think that it's difficult because um, it's real hard to find employees, you know, the equipment. We know that the building needs maintenance. We know the scale needs maintenance. I know that you want to move to take getting rid of cash and taking automated, you know, payments, which I think is a great idea. But I think there's yeah, going to no be cash. some software in there. And, and it's interesting. And, and it's going to be interesting because your scale has serious issues. What your scale is built on, one of the couple of the cells or not, there's some big maintenance coming. And um, so I just, and, it, and it's tough for us. Obviously, we're doing the, the books because it is Bethel's tax ID number that runs that facility. So that's why the finances come here. I have tried and I'm working and praying that, you know, CompuCount would take it over. Um, but we've kind of come to a little bit better of an agreement. They, they pay, we pay them, they pay us if they owe us money or we pay them each month if we owe them money. So there's a balancing, but it takes a lot of time. And I just feel like, you know, there's a lot to it and there's a lot coming down the pike. Um, every legislative session about recycling. And then of course the recycling market is one time, you know, steel is great, then it's not. And, and, um, so and we had you have the opportunity to give Royalton notice that says, you know, we're not sure, but we may or may not want to terminate this contract. I think that you should give them notice. It, it buys you a few months, but let's have a conversation about what is working, what isn't working. I also think it would be very interesting for someone to do an exit interview with the, so the current manager. Why is she leaving? We had that. We had that discussion, and it is going to happen. And is it going to be you or Lindley and one person from Royalton? It was going to be one from each town. Yeah, we had to decide who. But yeah. We talked about it. And and that's interesting. You know, I think that would. You know, I know what I hear. Uh, you know, be, um, from from people you know that that go or, or people that you know work there or worked there in the past or, and um, I just think. And when we got together with the town of Royalton, so there was things going to happen. So anybody that's on the, don't just think that, you know, we've just all of a sudden have come to this realization no, that no. we don't need to be in the trash <laughs> business. So back in March, I mean, because in March, basically what it was is, you know, they owed us money because uh, we were bankrolling the operation uh, and they weren't. So it was 100 percent on Bethel to yes. support the losses. Um, and we had made a suggestion about um, well, I won't say the people putting together uh, a couple of people to explore other ideas of how to manage that facility, which might be uh, a partnership with a solid waste, an approved solid waste, yeah, like you know, like a, a Casella yeah. or one of those, um, or different other hybrid methods. And, you know, so we were open to the idea of let's see what our options are. And Royalton at that point just wanted to manage the facility. Um, so we passed on some responsibilities to them. They took on the financial responsibilities. No, they didn't. Well, no. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. No, they, <laughs> no, they didn't. 
Sorry, so they they started. They did take out a loan for a hundred thousand, right. just like we did, and they did start. And they agreed that they understood the f the finances more, and so or everybody understands the finances more on that board. <laughs> no, they do. And 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 now, yes, yeah, so they that, say that all the time. So that they um, so that yes, we pay the what they owe us or vice versa. There's a more fiscally uh, better position for Bethel, but it, it it's still you just have one opportunity, and we haven't heard anything. And I'm not, you know, the committees are hard. It's, it's, it's only six people, you know, to, to be these committees and things are happening and things are being, uh, you know, so I just, I don't, you know, I just think it's difficult. Yeah. You get the minutes, you can read the minutes and see what's going on. But I just really wonder if it's not time to really take a hard, fast look at, so, at so this. So just us giving notice is not a final saying. It's basically us giving Royalton an opportunity to come back to the table and talk to us. Yeah, it's no, saying. Yeah, I don't think at that point. It's saying that it's it's giving. It's the select board provides notice to the other of its intent to terminate this agreement, not less than 180 days before the end of the then current current term. Doesn't mean so that you can't So it's amend basically it, saying right. come up maybe we want to make some changes. Yeah, and maybe for with, yeah. Or yeah. or we're getting out completely. You know. Or yeah. Or maybe it's to say okay. We're going to give notice, and we want to. We want to look at like Randolph has an option, right? They somehow do some, at least yeah, something, to do Casella. something with Casella. But yes, Lindley, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, well, didn't so hear you I, I think that I just wanted to vocalize my my take on this. So I've been really on the fence about it, probably since last March. You know, when we started yeah. this conversation, I've been going back and forth and back and forth. And um, one of the biggest hangups that I have come to every single time is that currently. Bethel, the transfer station employees are Bethel employees, which means they are accruing retirement through VMERS. VSERS, the state. Um, and if, for whatever reason, whether it's this approach with terminating the agreement or something else, if Royalton takes over, existing employees lose their retirement accrual. Well. And so, so I, I, that like, for me has has been a hang up and I think it's becoming less of a hang up because now we're down to a single a well, I was gonna say you're employee. only down to like one employee. Right. So this point. is where like it's shifted. For me personally, I'm not even hundred percent clear on which way I would go, but it shifted significantly and I feel like it's worth saying because I think we all at a time back in March, April when we were having these discussions, we all kind of kept coming to the same conclusion of like, oh gosh, we can't do that to our employees who that's their retirement. We can't mess with them in that way and yet i think where you were going was there is there is a workaround there is a mechanism because right. you're right if they became royalton employees um you can there's a buy-in and i think it, whether in this person I, I, if you have if you have an employee that's fully vested which you do and and me i don't know if they're of retirement age or not but there is a way, there's a buy-in for them to go to Veeamers, which mm -hmm. is actually a, a good, depending on the plan that Royalton has, um, it could really, you know, buy you in. I had that option when I came here. We'll just use myself as an example. I had done time, well, that's not right, but done time. <laughs> I had participated in, let me rephrase that, in, in Veeamers. And so when I came, went to come to Veeamers, I talked to the lady at retirement. She's like, okay. Her advice was stay, keep Veeamers yeah. and Veeamers and then become fully vested in the state. But I did have an option to buy in. Mm -hmm. And I think that this person would have the same. And, it, and it may buy them up depending what plan they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, because if, say, they were like Veeamers plan C and it's 20 years, it, it really may buy this person further. Mm -hmm. So you're right. It, yeah. it, there is a mechanism. And now you're right. You're down to one employee that's been there consistently it, so it changes the playing field in, in yeah. a way and yeah I think, but i don't think it should be forgotten in our discussions that no it was an original sort of we all kind of came around to like oh that's an issue <laughs> so. and it also so, could be a it conversation definitely was one of many, yeah. Right. yeah if the if you were going to negotiate either yourself out it would be something you could say it's like hey look this person if to see if you have the same retirement to see if you have the same health insurance i mean there's there would be a way through your negotiations to make sure that maybe your this employee maybe didn't lose, and um, if you want. But to I think out of all the, system. you know, uh, out of all the time I've been on the board, it seems like right now is probably the most appropriate 
opportunity for us to make the change. It seems because, and the only reason why I say that is we have, you know, we have been working through some short term issues, which was the debt that was owed to Bethel, that has been paid, mm -hmm. you know, we're whole. Um, you know, now there's some short term things with management of the facility and turnover of employees and things like that. So there's some uncertainty there. And in the long term picture is that facility was managed just like this town with no foresight. So there's there's building maintenance, there's scales, there's a, there's a very large coming here in the next five or 10 years that needs to go into that. And it's gonna come down where you're not gonna be able to put it all on the consumer. It's gonna have to come to the towns. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're already looking at water projects and you know, and to, you know. I mean, I've always thought that we shouldn't be in the trash business period. And, and highlighted by the fact that we were owed so much money, mm. you know, made it just ridiculous. But, and we got together with them, we had a meeting, the financial side has turned around so that we're whole now, but I, we haven't had any follow-up meetings, and it seems I only, you know, I don't, I'd, I'd wanna talk to Dave and Lindley to get first-hand knowledge, but what I hear is that things are not necessarily heading in the direction that we had thought about when we had the joint meetings. So I think we need to get an update on all of that, but I still think that we should not be in the trash business. Yeah, and I, I think just to sort of answer your question, Paul, and Dave can certainly have a differing opinion, but I think we've, we've the, the newer board has sort of worked towards a similar end goal, but mm -hmm. to me at least it still feels like Bethel's going this way and Royalton's going this way and we're on somewhat different yeah, tracks and not necessarily always, you know, we're, we're a functional board, it's not to say mm -hmm. that it's not functional but it, it doesn't necessarily feel like we're driving for the same things or we're right. driving in the same direction. So we can come to conclusions together and we can, you know, have our meetings go, but it's it's just a really different feel than like this where we we are all very much working in a similar direction and we all are coming in with, we want what's best for the town. Um, so I don't know if you have a... S similar except the only problem I have is that we get to a meeting and the chair and the uh, clerk have already decided a whole bunch of stuff and we just have to kind of vote on it and it's like wait a minute I, i'm the vice chair and i had no idea what you guys are talking about i mean even our our that, lack that of budget me. discussion i i played chris at our last meeting and went through lines that i wanted to understand why they were different or why they, and, and everyone else seemed like why are you wasting our time it's like this is the entire this is the budget thing. Meeting. We're doing the budget yeah, discussion. Yeah. Like, we should spend at least an entire meeting on this, yeah, not just exactly. 30 yeah. seconds and yeah. approve it. And the fact that I was asking for explicit information line by line seemed like, well, why are you doing that? Mm. Yeah, That's what we are here to do. And it was interesting because, uh, you know, I had talked to Jen and, and she'd seen the agenda and the budget wasn't on it. And the iteration, she was like, I'm like, look, it was due in October. And everybody knew it was a hard pass because you were down people. But I'm like, you have to get this done before the new year. This has, and there's towns that are on calendar years yeah. that are in your alliance district and need to go to town report. So, and, and she was a little bit upset, you know, about the communication between, you know, some things. I mean, like it seemed like in March. I was hopeful and, it would change. And feel free to speak, you know, freely if, if I'm saying something inappropriate mm -hmm. but it sounds like we were all kind of thinking the same thing in March without mm -hmm. having a straw poll it seemed yeah. like we were all kind of like we need to get out of this like you know if only we could get paid whole or there was a couple of niche right. things yeah. we seemed like right. we were yeah. Yeah. I mean do we still seem to feel the same same way about this or because you know? we can it's the letter that would go to them and go to the judge just basically saying we want to terminate this agreement and then it gives us some time to say okay you know we want completely out and then to look at it because you know I don't this isn't a money maker if they have a building and equipment I don't see you getting paid out when you know there's some deficits there you may just walk around walk out of it just now whole and that yeah. may be it you're not you know there's no big exactly. cash payout here it may be just like well, and there's ways to negotiate on the way out yeah too. exactly but I'm just saying retirees and, and I would employee be really and curious to hear Royal inside, like say we 
you know, submit this intent to terminate, to hear their side, because I could really see them going in two different directions. One, coming back to the table and wanting to renegotiate the contract and wanting to stay in this with us, and then we have to take a hard look at what we want. But I could also see them saying, okay, we'll take it. I think that's you what know? And, yeah, and I think. And if that's I think the so case, too. then maybe it's a win-win. So maybe they get what they want and we get what we so want. So budget-wise, let's... Yeah, but we're still on the hook for the... For the, the, land. the, the landfill, the which is so free, we, well, we would that always that doesn't matter. That has no. that's a, yeah. another exactly, the point, the which that's point. pretty much taken care of. So, I mean, well, other than there's some small the amount of yearly down the road, I mean, well, yes, the closure fees are in every budget, right? So it, like, we would have to yeah. start budgeting for it in the general fund budget. Right. We would put right. a line in here for closure fees of a few thousand a year mm -hmm. that would take care of because is you have testing that has to be done. Yes, yep, there's testing. We figure it was like. There's test, I think so. There's like that. Yeah. Property, yeah. If, property, testing, if property maintenance and, rather than managing a facility, it, it's not. Pro, it's, well, it's, it's it's yeah. It's your clo It's your state legally yeah, obligated state closure state, fee yeah. closure. Yeah. So you would maintain. You know, there's a there's a money out there. Or there, I guess that's for the closure of the transfer station. But there's you'd have to do. There'd have to be a legal agreement about your obligations, and not for mm -hmm. sure. But yes, we would have to start budgeting money. <laughs> In our budget for a few thousand, that um, because because we're owners of the property, right, and we always will be for the landfill, yeah. and, and it's not in this iteration of the budget, but um, it could be a capital improvement. I don't know. We'd have to figure that out how we deal with it. So, but, what would happen to the revenue piece? Because right now, it would go the away. budget that's approved. You know, so that just throwing that out there. If we did that. Uh, that's about one percent worth of money that's in sitting our there. Budget. In, in our home. budget. Yeah. Yes, but what would happen is, I mean, because <laughs> that's that's revenue Honestly, that we wouldn't collect, which means like if we were just talking about approving a two percent budget, if if we voted out that revenue didn't come in, then that would be like a three three percent budget. You know what I mean? Like, right. That However, that change is going to happen too. Uh, yeah, but I will say. Right, that would be before the year. Well, they're in July. They're calendar, right? And we're they're, no, they're no, fiscal. fiscal. Oh, are they're they fiscal? Yeah. Why was I thinking they were calendar year? Yeah, no, they're That's fiscal. Just they're fiscal. Bill, like White River Valley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're fiscal um, year. Yeah. But however, let me just say this. So they would start I, June. They start July. But, so this would July. It would affect the budget that we're currently discussing. Yes. Right. It would the one we're discussing. The current, yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. It'd be the one we're discussing. And I right, think, right, yes, yes. The I one think, we're discussing that we are hoping right. to approve next. And period. I think it's a little bit of a misnomer to say we would lose lose this revenue. I doubled. I took a higher percentage of my salary, Dietrich's salary, and Pam's salary to that I allocate to the to the transfer station because we've been getting me pers We've been getting hosed. No. We've been pay I've been using way too much time in the facility. So. Yes, we wouldn't be recouping a small portion, like 1% or 3% or 5 whatever I'd use, I don't have in front of me, of the salary, but that is a huge time saver. So it now frees up, and, and Kelly and Pam, well, Pam does their bills, so now she's no longer processing their AP, so that gives her a little more time to do, you know, clerk stuff, treasurer stuff. and. It frees me up because it is a can be a huge time suck. I'm not. I don't even think the number I put in this time, and I doubled it, covers the time that I put in down there. So it frees staff up to do other things, which is actually helps us grow in the sense that, you know, maybe someone has time to do more, more zoning, or there's more grant writing, or there's more planning, or the, you know, it just all of a sudden right. I feel like we as a staff. Well, yes, can accomplish more because I think we're you'll not be able to accomplish constantly. more, but you still have to. Yeah. You, you still you're have right. to deal with it in the budget because no. you're not going to. Absolutely. You're not going to. That revenue is not going to come in. Yeah. You know. Are we yeah. Are we in a position to have a motion tonight, or do we do want to? Well, the the I difficulty we a, have is, if this is just a notice, right? It doesn't exactly have to be done through a lawyer, does it? No, it just we have no. It tells you exactly how to do it right here. It says that if it doesn't have to go through a lawyer, no, I mean, it we just could... says that we. Um, so basically, um, any such notice shall be deemed given when deposited in the mail, properly addressed, and with prepaid postage postage prepaid to 
the town of Bethel or the town of, Ro of Royalton. And it just says, if this contract is terminated, the select board shall prepare and adopt prior to the end of the then cur current term, a plan of dissolution, which shall specify the means by which assets of the facility shall be liquidated and specify the nature and any amount of any liabilities or obligations to be assumed and paid by each town or, or specify the amount of monies due from each town if necessary to extinguish the liabilities of the so facility. So that's six months from now. So yeah, so that's six months from now. So basically, so or, right or you may decide, be okay, of, it's gonna be nice. just a letter of notice to them saying, yeah, you know, we're gonna exercise this. Time. And then <clears throat> it's gonna be sitting down and saying, how do they feel about it? Negotiating they want, out of it. And trying to negotiate out of it. And then eventually, yes, there'd be sure. some legal fee right. in there for us to, yeah. to come up with a, a yeah. ending. You, and who knows, maybe you end up renegotiating this in a way that you like it better. So maybe it's just another, it's also a catalyst for another uh, conversation, so. Well, I mean, I, I would make a motion to, for us to put in our, our letter of, notice um, in regards to the interlocal agreement with the town of Royalton. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Okay. And that just means we're getting we're the ball getting, rolling. Getting, yeah, next rolling. steps. All right. And so I'll have More to I'll look at the, yeah. I'll look at the budget. And, and what we probably ought to do next is what, what I'll do, um, Therese, is I will reach out to Chris Noble Okay, I'll send you. I'll, send well, him. I'll try to reach out to him tomorrow, but sometimes it takes a while to get a hold of him because he's always out of country. And True. Just to give him the notice that we have talked about this and you will be seeing a formal notice coming. Okay. And can we schedule something in the new year? I mean, at that point, would it be, well, mm -hmm. we get six months, so. Yeah. Do it before so, town meeting day or after town meeting day in case there's a I mean, different makeup. I think before, if we can, just yeah. to get it going. I think so. I think we, we probably, as our board, need to discuss what our ideal terms yeah, are. Yeah, what our steps would be. And then yeah. meet with them and, you know, and then hear their terms and then come back. Yeah. You know, I think there's going to be some rounds of back and forth. Yeah, so, I think so. I think so. in your January meeting, we could schedule an executive session. Or actually, honestly, I think we should do well, that's a, what I was going to ask you. Is that executive meeting. session because, it it, is, because it's legality? Doing, well, you're doing, no, because it's a contract negotiation. But because these meetings, our meetings tend to get late, I think we should just do it as a one agenda item. Uh, do it on like a, another Monday night or Wednesday. Just thank you. Six o'clock, just us. That would just be really nice. the just only item on the agenda. Just to talk Sunday about that. Sunday morning breakfast meeting. Ooh, there you go. You're making pancakes. Now? I'll make pancakes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kitchen>. Done. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So I'll make a note. Cool. All right. Anything left on the town manager's report we didn't talk about, Therese? Um Yes, the also oh, our excellent news from Wayne Elliott that the state's going to proceed a loan amount giving us another 240,000 looks like we may get more. Um, I also signed a waiver right of first refusal and termination and I gave you that copy in here. I don't know why you ever would have had a right of first refusal. You don't want a business to leave town. So I'm not sure what that was about. It was in the 1970s. Um, I did approach them at the same time and said, hey, by the way, <laughs> we need an easement. A yeah, water easement. About that. Yeah, so I did good. talk to them about it, or I talked to the seller, and and we <laughs> talked to the lawyer of the buyer. I no, I couldn't legally get. Now, did they vote. have to get a waiver from the school district and the fire department too? Uh, no, we were. I think we. Zero. Well, they may have. Uh, not the fire they district. Signed, they signed the contract. They didn't have the right of first refusal. But. Hmm. Yeah, we had to sign it, and I think that's what they said originally. Was it looks like. Originally, it was a school, so if it was a school, then it would have been owned by the town, and then when the town deed over, maybe they didn't clear this up. Because, oh, yeah. back they in the years, like years that. and years ago, that, that she, someone was saying that probably was a school um, oh, site, yeah. because there was multiple within the town. But, so anyways, I talked to the lawyer, he said I could, and we reviewed it, two lawyers reviewed it, so we were all good there. Awesome. Um, and then there's, uh, I think that's, I don't think there's anything else. In here. And then the, um, the storm water issue, was that last meeting? Storm water? Yes. So Dave, you had missed it, but um, there's a piece of property, so um, go up Camp Brook Road, and as soon as you turn on to Dart Hill Road, 
used to be Reggie Hill's place where the trailer is down over and they sold it to Sadie Tatro at the tax sale. So there's some water discharge issues. So years ago when the, when the drainage was put in on that road, that piece of land wasn't developed. It was just a piece of land. And then over time, the, you know, there's trailers and now a permanent dwelling there. Um, so a lot of the stormwater that comes off the bottom of that road pipes directly right in front of their trailer and the water literally goes, you know, right through the driveway. And then a couple of, a couple of years ago, we installed another culvert just up the road from there at the next house on the left. And so now it pipes, a majority of the storm water gets piped out there and it goes around the back side of the property that's not buildable. But there's still a remainder of the storm water on the lower end that still flows onto their property. And what they're looking at doing is they're trying to, they're trying to um, build on the land, um, clean land up, build a house on it, but have asked the town to deal with the stormwater discharge that's there. According to their lawyers, just their lawyers, or was there an engineer they said involved? They, they said they had a lawyer That it's engineer. the town's responsibility because of the stormwater. We didn't know, so we've asked, we're waiting back, we're waiting to hear back on our yeah. attorney. The league uh, kind of stays out of that. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, well. So, so we're waiting to hear back from the town attorney, um, and we have, I, I've talked to the owners and we're going to put them back on the calendar for the first Monday in January to talk about that, which is the 10th. So Yeah. So we did, I, and I sent um, David Rue, one of the town attorneys, David Rue, he did, I ended up, he wanted a tax map to see where the property was, what documentation did we have saying that it was in the 70s. I said, I believe it was even sooner, but I'm like, you know, someone who worked for the town for 30 years is going to say, look, that or plus is the culvert has been there since you know forever so anyways they were just looking at the state you know rules and regulations and in the meantime I got an estimate which was you know rough it's if we don't hit ledge and that bridge sits on ledge so we're thinking that could be 20 25,000 to remove that culvert and try to move it and of course the lady on the opposite side already has a water issue um, who's on uh, a big brink she comes down and she yeah, has right. she has a water issue already, um, water in her basement, and so she obviously doesn't want water to go move to her side. So if we have to ditch where that meets at that V of Darton um, Brink okay. to, to put a culvert down the middle to cut pavement and, and then daylight yeah. it at the bridge, it's going to be pricey. So right now we're just trying ledge, to. It's not even right now we're just trying to figure out whose responsibility. It's what we is have at to this do. Point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were kind of feeling that it was kind of grandfathered in because the drainage was put in prior to the activities on the property, but there's there's nothing in the... I don't know yet. There's nothing in the ledger to show that there was ever any type of formal... No, I went through the land records to see if there was formal a Formal permission, but then culvert, back then, so. that, you know, so wait yeah. and hear back and then it will recycle. Or, this, and this I did have culvert, GMP look at it. This culvert is literally at the intersection of Brink and yep. Yes. Yep. Right if at the you get out y. of your car and, and, and look in that Y, right where the pavement's you can at. See it. Yeah, you could see it across the road, yeah. yeah. I was just there, up there today and trying to... Yeah. So if you have yep. a chance between now and the 10th... Take a peek up there, and we'll wait to hear back, and then we'll, uh, seen it. we'll talk about so <laughs> talk about. And we that, did, so. and I did ask Caleb Holly, the new um, you know, Carol of, of GMP. He took a peek at it, and he said because that was a concern of theirs. He has no concerns whatsoever about the stability of that pole, pole yeah. or the guy wire. That was a concern that they had, uh -huh. and he yeah. already looked at it. Got back to me, so um, so that's All it right. there. And. We had the meeting minutes from the 22nd. The, um, I don't usually pick these apart at all. Um, but the, the, only, the only change that I saw, and, and the only reason why I just wanted to make sure it was in there, and we did discuss it was, uh, so in regards to the stormwater discharge on Dart Hill yeah. piece was 
Um, so at the bottom it says, uh, you know, Therese Kirby will have the road foreman provider with an estimate to relocate the culvert if it's possible and report back to select board. But we also talked about consulting with the town attorney. Yes. Um, and I think it's important to make sure we yep. have that in there. Uh, well, actually, your not well, weren't your exact quoted words, but, but was that you were going to consult with the town attorney and the league, the league of cities and towns. Yep. So okay. Just thank make sure you. we get that in there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then not a biggie, but no, and then right when now. we were talking about the Australian ballot pieces of it. Mm -hmm. um, Could be me. I oh, no, mind. Uh, don't worry about that. That's fine. Right. Okay. I will get that. get that. Because the way it read right now was that we were just going to, you know, get a price to relocate. Yeah, no, over, that's know. good. I'm glad so, that you caught that. No, thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Which that. maybe it will work out that way. I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah. Protects us a little bit there. Yeah, thank you. I anyway. appreciate that. Did you have any? No. Come All on, right. Paul. Paul. No, I thought there was one. Well done. Move we accept as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And then I had a couple of small questions in regards to the current budget. Sure. Not, they, weren't, they some, weren't like. I wrote some notes, I think. What's going on? They were more. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, with that one I can talk to you another time. Oh, never mind. I found that other one out when I was looking through this. I, I saw it in the budget, but the Church Street Bridge, I was wondering when that was up. But it says 2024. 20, oh, 2028. 2028 is what it was. I don't know when. Still paying on that. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, for whatever reason, I don't know why it looks that way so on the last page with the town garage so we had set aside seventy five thousand dollars as what we were going to say as the first payment towards right. the town garage right right but right now it shows that we've paid that what i did so I did you transfer that into, into a, a fund? fund okay yeah, yeah. all right yep. this sorry because I, I was like yeah. last i checked we haven't built anything <laughs> 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 what is she fine <laughs> Yeah, so. no, I did that. Oh, and the officer's salaries will be paid in the next payroll in December. Gotcha. We had done, uh, Deidre had done employees, and then the fire department, which takes a while. So the lady at CompuCount was like, could we just, could they do next time? Is there a reason why they get paid out once a year? Is, does, is that yeah. just the way it's always been? Or is it, it better is, to do, like, twice a year? Because, or, in, you know? on, and sometimes you're cutting very small checks oh, so gotcha. no and and honestly um other towns i've seen it's usually once a year okay. and it's usually once a year around before christmas i think it's usually that time of year for people because they're okay. whatever they have for money they can use for christmas shopping okay. but i mean i know it's what and it, some and of them are small. In that tax year yeah and some oh, of them right, are small yeah. checks so uh, yeah, it's all well, i'm hard. looking forward to getting mine that's right don't spend it on one place <laughs> and uh so all right, and we did have um, we did have a bunch of committee notes in there, so hopefully everybody was able to read through those. Grace, what do you do with the the CPUs that you replaced? Oh, I'm Computer. sorry. I was like, well, I had to think about what you said. I had a repeater on the brain. Um, so you, they take them. They take them. They usually take them, and then they keep them for like a year or more, or they take out the hard drives mm -hmm. and sort of because. I called him one day. I was like, hey, <laughs> for some reason, some of this stuff didn't transfer. He's like, never, we keep them. So they take them and keep them for like a year and then they recycle them or do whatever they do with them. There's a good piece in there. Yeah, for months. Put some material on there. Like, they'll you. destroy yeah. it, but yeah, they keep really them nice. for like a year. A lot but of pictures. We have is yeah. already I was like, uploaded huh. onto our server anyway, so we already have it. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, um, for mine, it was just my Outlook contract. I, I knew she was from New York. I, did, I actually didn't know that he was from Pennsylvania. Oh, oh it's not going. So they weird. recycle. Yeah. And they do recycle, but yeah, but that data is already yeah. on our drive that we have here but they'll they'll be stronger plus they see all that in ways because they yeah, used to be a recycle place out of winter yeah and I, I bought a couple of computers from and put a couple of mine down there yeah back in the day no no kidding yeah 
Yeah. You're right, there used to be more women. Women's cycle is as well. There used to be more of them for it. All right, any other business to come before the board? So just don't run out because you need to have your picture taken. Oh, yeah. Okay. Huh? All right, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right.